What's, What's up, up, everybody? <laughs> What's good? What's up, trombone? Stained glass. Oh, wow, trombone is first today. Oh, my goodness. Claiming it, naming it, and claiming it. What's good? What's up, folks? How are we doing? Happy Thursday. I just uploaded a new TikTok. I'm gonna give it a quick like. Always like your content, folks. If you don't like it, who else will? Hey yo, what's up? Chuck with the three month prime sub. Thank you so much for using your prime here. You only get one of those and you use it here and that means a lot. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate it. Stained, I don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> uh, as far as I can tell, trombone is clearly first. So, I don't know what you mean. You say you're first, but it seems pretty apparent to me that trombone was was clearly first. I mean, she's got the, she's got it. Yeah, doesn't count, can't count. Trombone's got first, it, it, is, it is what it is, you know? As far as my eyes can see, Trombones is first. Folks, we got a new a new command today. The first shall be last. <laughs> I love it. Got a new command today. Exclamation point question of the day. We're going to start throwing our questions of the day here in the chat. So if at any point you want to know the question of the day uh, during stream, we're going to let this community also hop in on the, on the goodness. Interesting. Magby, huh? Stained glass? Trying to make the commands a little more interesting and engaging and fun. Folks, we got a great, we have a great stream planned. We have a fantastic stream plan today. I mean, just fantastic. Let's see, that one is Big Brother. What does that mean, Trombone? What does that mean? What do you think Big Brother means? Are you feeling like an older sibling today? I know you are a sibling, but I don't know where you are in the order. Are you the youngest? The oldest, the middlest. I don't know how many siblings you have. I think you just have one. If you have more than one, I've only ever heard you talk about your brother. Lurk. Thanks for the lurk chat. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. No clue. Only big brother I know is 1984. Always watching. Always watching. Older brother who I'm currently mad at. Oh no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring up a sore subject. I was just trying to remember your sibling situation. I'm gonna go drop over in chat. At chat, we are live. Announcing my NaNoWriMo. And so much more. Be there, baby. We're gonna do this angry little turn up. This angry little turn up. That's gonna be my, that's gonna be our gift for today. He texted me last night asking if I heard the latest heresy then didn't tell me what it was. Well, the heresy that I'm seeing right now is hot Dr. Pepper that Chris W dropped over in our discord. What's that about, huh? Y'all in your warm, y'all in your warm beverages that are not meant to be warm, okay? I can get behind some of it. I can get behind some of it. I love coffee. I love tea. All right. Well, I like coffee and I like tea. But I mean, it's a bit little, 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 little me. And if I will, would you still? Yours and mine. We see you on. Never said little bit do me down. Thank you for the follow, Super Dog. What's up? Greetings. What's up, Audacity? How we doing? Happy Thursday. Superdog, did you follow because of my killer John Popper impression? I gotta know. Was that what did it? Were you like, I don't know if I'm gonna follow this guy, and then you heard John Popper and you were like, that's the one. That's the guy for me. Is that what it was? 
I'm gonna assume that was the case. What if you just immediately unfollowed? <laughs> no, I'm not actually. I'm not actually here for that. No, thank you. All right, folks. It's nine o'clock. It's nine o'clock. We got to get started because we have so much going on this stream. We're gonna start our stream by uh, ranking all of the games we've rolled credits here on Checkpoint Church's stream. So if, for those of you that joined us, I think it was Tuesday, Kuro encouraged us to do all the games I've ever beaten this year. But now I wanted to do all the games we've beaten here on stream. Doing great, currently working on a blueprint for a sci-fi steampunk machine. Dope. That's super cool. Superdog, welcome to the chat. Let us know more about you. What kind of games are you into? How'd you find us? We're happy that you're here. We're Checkpoint Church, Church for nerds, geeks, and gamers. Um, we are here on Twitch Monday through Thursday and every other Friday. But the good stuff happens in our church building, which is a digital church building over on Discord, exclamation point Discord in the chat. We're active there 24-7, all the time have stuff going on there. And then if you're ready for uh, the next step of discipleship to start learning more about the Bible, because we don't require you to, to believe any of that stuff or know any of that stuff, um, then, uh, yeah, all that stuff is available to you over on our YouTube channel. So... Discord is really just a place for good fellowship and community. Love Satan. Man alive. Goodness gracious. I don't even have my creator dashboard up, my friend. Coming in here just to troll. That's a bummer. Or are you here to learn and talk? I'm fine with having a conversation. But that, that comment does seem a bit trolly, my friend. Not trolly enough that I'm going to just outright ban you. Yeah, thanks, Trombone. Not outright that I'm just going to ban you, but... Odds are we're, we're probably a better place than you think we are. We're not one of those churches that's going to, like, condemn people to hell or be mean or ugly. Or condemn people at all, really. I'm pretty anti-judgment in general. But I hear you. A lot of people have been hurt by the church, dude. A lot of people have been hurt by the church. What's up? Cameron plus Deanna. How was Gloomhaven this morning? Welcome, welcome. Thanks for the raid. So is Gloomhaven, is it one continuous campaign or do you start like a new campaign every, every stream or like every week? Tell me more about it. I want to know so many more things. One of these days I'm going to play. I own it. I own it. I don't know why I won't play it. Rough morning. Oh, no. I've got to just tune into one of y'all's streams. The issue is, here's the issue, okay? I am most productive in the morning. I'm also most busy in the morning. And so by the time I sit down to my computer and I'm like, all right, I guess I could check out a quick stream. It's normally like 1 o'clock. I have no time in the mornings to catch y'all's stream, but I need to. I need to. But y'all stream before work, right? I mean, that's kind of y'all's flow in your day. And so I'm sure that makes it a little bit tricky. I'm sure that makes it just the slightest bit tricky. But I know nothing about it. One of these days. One of these days I'm going to learn. What he's saying is stream at one and he'll 100% be there. Very likely. It's very likely. As long as it's not whenever we're streaming, of course. All right, why am I dropping frames, dude? Come on. Where's our internet going? Dropping frames out of nowhere. All right, have we calmed it down? Thank you. Two different campaigns. One is the actual board game, and the other is exclusive to the digital game. So every day is going more missions in the one campaign. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, I seriously know nothing. I know nothing about Gloomhaven, but one of these days. Folks, the first thing we're going to be doing today is we're going to be ranking all the games we've ever rolled credits on here on Checkpoint Church's stream. <sighs> Drop it again! What is going on? All right, Internet, get it together, my friend. Get it together. Uh, then I'm going to announce my NaNoWriMo project. If you would like to join us in NaNoWriMo, we have a group. And uh, I would love to have you join us there. So I'll teach you how to do that. I'll show you what that is. You'll be welcome to join us. If you don't know what NaNoWriMo is, I'll be explaining all that stuff when we get to it. Um, and then after that, we're going to pick up Beacon Pines and just see how much further we can get as stream goes on. So maybe we'll finish Beacon Pines today. If not, we'll probably finish it next Thursday. 
Um, Thursday streams are kind of becoming just like my stream. This is this is the opportunity where I just get to kind of do whatever I want to do. Not that I don't do whatever I want to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, but like Thursdays are really like my, this is like the Nathan experience. If you want the nerd pastor Nate experience, this is when you get it. This is when you get the opportunity to really learn like what, what do I actually care about and want to do. And this is it. Okay. Then you have characters that gain XP between missions, so you unlock new abilities as your characters level up. Gloomhaven has some cool slash diverse classes. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. One of these days. One of these days. All right. Let's go over to a website cap. Boink. All right. This is our backlog. So these are all of the games that we have completed here on Checkpoint Church's stream since the beginning of our streaming. Uh, I went ahead and organized all the games that I had on my list that I've already ranked. So I've already ranked Omori through Frog uh, Fractions. I have not put these into the midst yet, and so I'm going to put them in and add them into the list now. And this will just be a quick, it's going to be a quick one. Normally our top 10 lists will take a little bit more time. This one is a little bit different, and we're going to just kind of slowly but surely um, wheedle the different pieces in. So we'll start with Pokemon Snap. We'll see where does Pokemon Snap fall into this. Have I played Greece? I have not. Um, it has perpetually been on the list, and I would be totally down to play it. Um, it has been on my eternal backlog, and I always hear good things about it. I always hear that it's very emotional uh, and pretty short. I'd be totally down to play it on a Thursday. It is not on the list for Tuesday new arrivals, but maybe it should be because it is not currently. Also, what's up, St. Beer? Good morning. How's your morning treating you so far? Pokemon Snap, where does it fall into things? Pokemon Snap is a pretty important game to me. I would say it's better than a short hike. I'd say right there is a pretty good spot for that. I saw Asia played it and it looks so rad. I've heard so many good things about it. I really have. It's been one of those games. It's been, like I said, it's been a perpetual interest of mine. Death Orb is really, really good, but definitely not as good as One Shot. Probably better than Pokemon Snap, but I don't know. I'm, right now, I'm going to put it below Pokemon Snap. Star Fox. Ooh, I love Star Fox. Definitely better than Pokemon Snap. Uh, let's see. Unpacking was really, really good. I don't know if it was quite as good as Neon White, but it was definitely better than Last Call. Simulacra was fine. I would say it was about as good as Cooking Companions. I would say maybe a little worse. Undertale is the greatest game of all time. So we're going to go ahead and bump that all the way up. Uh, Life is Strange is one of the greatest games of all time. I'm going to say that's... Woof, that's really tough. Is Life is Strange better or worse than Immortal? I'm going to say better, but that's really hard. Uh, Before Your Eyes is a fantastic game. I'm going to say Before Your Eyes is around snap level. I'm going to say it was... Ah, man. Better or worse than Death Storm. I'm going to say it's a little worse than Death Storm. And No Longer Home, I did not enjoy. It was okay, but it was a little, a little confusing... A little slow, a little weird. It like uses a lot of borrowed assets that were frustrating. I'm gonna put that probably around Memoir Blue. I'm gonna say it was worse. Is Undertale the one with the trippy evil flower? You talking about Flowey? My buddy Flowey here? You saying he's trippy? Flowey's the best. He's the goodest boy. And he's definitely not evil. That's not an evil laugh. That's not an evil laugh. That's a good laugh. That's a kind laugh. Oh, batteries are dying. Uh yeah, this is this is Flowey. Undertale is the greatest game of all time. I will stand by it. It is the it is the number one game that every um, every pastor needs to play. Every clergy person needs to play. Uh, that let's see what's another one. Uh, Undertale. I have a whole list. This is the list though. Here we go. That was easy. That was easy. Made that list real quick. Um, let's see. I have a game. I have a list of games that need to be played by pastors. Let's see if I can find it. There's some good ones on here. Undertale's definitely top of the list. On my list, I've never actually played it. Well, the issue with Undertale is that it is so full of spoilers and it's been spoilered by so many people. That And I'm always one to overhype it, and so I try really hard not to overhype it. Okay. Undertale. Last of Us Before Your Eyes, Spirit Fair, Life is Strange, Hellblade, Bioshock Infinite, That Dragon Cancer, Road 96, and Detroit Become Human. Yeah, I agree with that. I still stand by that list. There you go. Yeah, I think every I think every person needs to play Undertale, and definitely everybody that's in the in the in the pastorate. So this is our list. I still need to play more Undertale. Yes, you do, T-Bone. We do have a full playthrough of it. We have a full Let's Play on our YouTube channel. So if you ever want to just watch us play through it, we play through the entire game, and I give commentary underneath it. So what side am I using? This is backlogged. If you, uh, I know that Frost likes to use GG. A lot of people like to use GG. I like backlogged. They're basically identical. Uh, the real reason I like Backlog is that this is what I've always done, and I'm so far into it now that I cannot possibly shift to another logging site. It's simply a video game logging site. 
and it also has the ability to do a lot of other things that you can use it for. Uh, I'll show you. I'll show you a little tour. So if you create a backlogged account, you'll get the opportunity to do all this fun stuff. It shows you what kind of games are trending. If you have friends, it'll show you what they're rating. It'll show reviews from across the site, uh, all that sort of stuff on here. But then what's really cool is your profile. So you get to say your bio, you get to give ratings. It'll say how many ratings you've had. You can earn badges. You get to list your top five favorite games of all time. Those are mine. It'll also tell you some neat statistics if you have friends. Hey, look, I will be your friend on Backlogged. I will be your I will be your MySpace Tom, okay? If you want to be my friend on Backlogged, I will instantly accept your friend request. No questions asked. Ah, okay. Sorry. Sorry. I knocked the microphone over. Um... You can list your favorite games. It'll tell you all the games that you've ever played whenever you log them. It'll tell you how many games you've played that year. And then it'll also tell you how many games you have on your back log. Good morning, Hunter fam. How we doing? Uh, so what I use it for is the first day I took, uh, I just I listed all the top 10 pages or like 30 pages or something of games that I've played. Um, but then as I've been going, I've just been journaling all the games that I play when I play them. So, for instance, this morning I've already played, I went on my walk. I played 25 minutes of Pokemon Go this morning. Before my walk, whenever I was drinking coffee this morning, I had Marvel uh, Snap Up, and I played 25 minutes of that. So I list every game that I play, every single day that I play it, and how long I play it for. What I do this for is because it helps me know, like, how long I've played a game and what I've put into it. Um... So, for instance, like with our streams or whatever, I can know that I don't really have a, a huge opinion on Gotham Knights, right? Because I've only played one hour of it. So whenever you go and edit your log, you can log things, you can put a review, you can say when you started, you can rate it, what platform did you play it on, what medium did you play it on, all that sort of stuff. No, it's all manual, no automatics, but it does, once you input it in this log, it does do everything manual or automatically from that point on. So this is all you actually have to do is log the game itself. And then once you do that, It'll log everything for you. What I like about it most is that it also gives you statistics. And so I get to know all of the things about all of the games that I play. So for instance, this is my release calendar. How many games have I played from each year that I've logged? Uh, I love this. I love being able to see how many games I've played. You can see that I don't have enough respect for the 70s and 80s clearly, um, but this is what I'm working on. So the reason that we do these top 10 lists is because I'm going through uh, the first 10 pages of every year and looking at all the games and saying the ones that I've played. So I'm slowly filling these out. These have already been filled out. These are all the games that I've played in the most time I've spent in them. I just think this is interesting to see. Uh, I haven't done, I didn't go back and do all my games. I've only done games that I've done since starting Backlogged. So that's kind of where I sit with that. It's nice to see how many days you've played a game. I really like being able to look at my library. So I did log all my physical library. I did not log all my digital library because I have like 1300 games in uh, Steam and I ain't about to do that. It'll show you how many how many like you've played via your backlog, uh, and what's really fun is that I can even log like let's plays. So like if I watch a game, then I'll log that I watched a game. It'll also list your favorite studios. So these are my favorite studios that I I typically have ranked the highest. Or you can look at how many games have you played from this studio. I'm surprised with how many Capcom games I've played actually. That's interesting, but yeah, obviously I'm a Nintendo fanboy. Always will be. Uh, but yeah, that's backlog. So if you've never been on here, please get on there, be my friend. And uh, I only currently have, let's see, I only have six friends. That's not enough friends. Be my friend. Mm -mm. I only have four friends. Sando and Splash never followed me back. Lame, lame. I do post reviews every now and again, not very, very often. Um, all the links are available at ex exclamation point Nate or exclamation point NPN. That's where you can find my link tree and all this stuff is there. So, yeah, this is a fun thing. I really like it. If you want to check out my lists, this is where I put all of them. All the things are there. I have a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun with this. I have this that should have worked. Uh -oh. There we go. Nate worked. I don't know why NPN didn't work. It should have. I have that as an alias. But yeah. There we go. I have one of these for everything. <laughs> so if you want to follow me on all of them, feel free. I also do this for manga that I read. I do this for uh, movies that I watch. I do this for TV shows that I watch. I'm obsessed with logging. I can't help myself. I don't want this life. It's the life that chose me, okay? But yeah, I'd recommend, I'd recommend Backlogged. If you want to do GG because more people that you like are on there, I get that. I understand it. I won't hold it against you. I, li I like Backlogged, and I've already logged this many things in it, and I'm just not willing to make the shift. Not for something that is virtually identical. 
Virtually identical. Not interested. Making the shift. Okay. So there we go. Let's look back at our list because I kind of got distracted showing you guys backlogged. Uh, so these are all the games beaten on Checkpoint Church's stream ranked. Uh, so here, yeah, there we go. Our top five games that we've ever played on stream are Undertale, Life is Strange, Omori, Inscription, and One Shot. I, I stand by that strongly. These are fantastic games. I would recommend these five games to just about anyone. Omori would be a little trickier, but those other those other four, well, maybe Inscription too. Those three, <laughs> Undertale, Life is Strange, and One Shot, I would recommend to just about anybody that knows how to play a video game. You should be playing those because, man, they are the best stories ever told. Yeah. Love it. Chat's in the clap for a good list. We love a good list. All right. Uh, let's see. Have I missed anything? I feel like I'm all over the place today. Appreciate the super active chat. Love it. Love it. Okay. So, NaNoWriMo. Does everybody know what NaNoWriMo is? Has everybody heard of NaNoWriMo? Because it's very possible that you haven't. And I can get that. I can get behind that. I understand if you've never heard of NaNoWriMo. It is National Novel Writing Month. November is National Novel Writing Month. And the whole you matter. Yes, made of sacred stuff. The world's a better place. Why? Because you are in it. So let's see. Yep, good. It went to the one I wanted to. This is nanorimo.org. Nanorimo.org. You can create an account on here. And when you do, you can sign up and announce through their official organization that you are starting a project to write a 50,000 word novel in November. It is a crash course. It is not expected that you will publish it. It's not expected that you will finish it. It's just a goal that you set for yourselves to make a make a book of 50,000 words in the month of November. You start on November 1st, work till the end. However far you get, it's however far you get. I did this last year and burned out about a little over halfway because I just got tired. But I did work on They Will Know, uh, and I still would love to work on this book more because it was so fun to work on. But you get to literally log how far you work every day. You get badges for how far you work in it. If you make an update, you know, all this sort of stuff. It just kind of keeps your achievements going so that you can keep going with it. Uh, I will be doing this again this year. And we're going to announce it right now. But if you would like to join, you can sign up for this website. And when you do, I will. And, you, and if you friend me. So sign up for the site, number one. Friend me, number two. I will add you to our Checkpoint Church group where we can encourage each other. So we do have a Checkpoint Church group. Currently, uh, it's just me and Perry. Me and Perry did it last year, uh, but I think Kung Fu Carl wants to join in this year. And we can talk in here, but really we'll also have a geek out section in the Discord. We'll probably be more active. This is just kind of a way of saying a little sense of camaraderie. And we can have up to 20 members. So if you want to join us for the writing journey, join alongside us and get some encouragement here. But first, we got to announce my, my newest project. I am going to be writing. Hashtag am writing for this year. And uh, it's going to be a little bit unconventional. I do see your redemption, by the way, Trombone. I'm not ignoring you. I'm just getting through the NaNoWriMo first. Um, it is going to be a bit unconventional, but I'm holding to it. And I'm going to hold to updating you guys every Thursday morning. So that's going to be my methodology is I'm going to update you every single Thursday morning um, as to where I am, how things are going, and maybe we'll even work on it a little bit while we're here. So I'm not going to say necessarily I'll, it'll be like a working stream, so I might not actually be writing during stream, but I might work on some of the outline or storyboards or whatever it may be. Speaking of storyboards, that's what's kind of weird about this one. This project is actually going to be a video game. So I'm working on a project with Ludo Good, but then I also dreamed up a project the other day, one of those like shower ideas, you know? And I was just feeling so good about it that I really wanted to work on it. And I'm very excited about it. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to announce that. And then we're going to work on some of the character designs because this is, again, going to be a video game. And then my goal, the Mirror Mural 2, there already is one, dude. <laughs> there already is one. It's a trilogy. I have all three written. I'm telling you guys, you don't even understand. You don't even understand how prolific of a 10-year-old I was. Need a command for the update? That's also very viable. That could be a thing. Um, but yeah. So this is NaNoWriMo, love to have you join us there. But we're gonna go ahead and announce our new project. So I don't actually have a name for it yet, so I'm trying to think of if I could come up with a name for it on the fly real fast. Um, basically, I'm writing uh, Danganronpa, but with Digimon characters, so monster characters instead. Um, and it is literally in that, in that kind of like motif of storytelling. And uh, I don't have a name for it yet though. So I think maybe it just needs to be untitled. 
uh, point and click game. It is going to be a point and clicker. It's a prequel. Uh, we are still prepping. Uh, it can be public. It's other, I guess. <laughs> uh, let's see. Associate with the NaNoWriMo event. It is going to be NaNoWriMo 2022. There we go. Goal name, it is going to be already set for me. So that starts in November, works till the end of November. The goal is 50,000 words. That's the NaNoWriMo goal. On details, what is the genre? Ooh, it's not erotic. Uh, let's see. Not spiritual either. Is there just, I guess, fantasy? Fantasy, not really adventure. It's going to be horror, supernatural, uh, mystery. Um. <laughs> Working on the uh, uh, script for a Digimon-esque um, horror mystery in the same vein. Digidang is a title I have I have not, but I will in the same vein as Danganronpa. So this is niche, man. This is niche. What's up, Harry? We do not have a Pinterest. We do not have a playlist yet. Actually, I guess the playlist could be just Milgram. <laughs> That's definitely what inspired some of it. Save project. Boom. Untitled point and click game. Look at that. It's official. It's official, you guys. It's officially official. I do already have a like Word doc of ideas typed up, but my goal for this is to do some character design. So that might be what we work on some today, and then we'll plan on doing this for a little chunk of time until we work over into Beacon Pines. Yeah? Bacon Pines. What's up, Perry? How are we doing? Welcome in. It's officially announced, my friend. My Nano is going to be a game script. Yeah. It's for the one that I mentioned the other day over in Ludo, or maybe in Game Dev, uh, where I asked if it should be a point-and-click first-person or a third-person adventure. And I think I'm going to go with the first person point and click, which means it's really just going to be a visual novel with uh, with escape the room elements. So I've got to figure out the script so that I can do the rest of the work. I already have the outline. I already have all the characters. I don't have names or titles, but I have literally the entire thing outlined already, which I think is pretty, pretty good start um, for a 50,000 word project. So I think that it shouldn't be, it's really going to be a lot of dialogue, which will be really weird. Um, Although, considering the mirror mural, <laughs> considering the mirror mural, uh, I'm pretty good at writing dialogue and just dialogue with no description. Danganronpa with Digimon, so the Digimon themselves. Yes. Yep. It's going to be the Digimon themselves get pulled into a Danganronpa esque situation. And the mystery is why have they been pulled into this and what are they going to do to get themselves out of it? Yep. 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 So what's cool about it is that you'll be able to use your kind of like Digimon-esque powers to escape the room. So it's more Virtue's Last Reward than Danganronpa, uh, but you get the idea. It's it's less of like they have to murder each other and more they have to escape and there are going to be people that are going to be betraying them throughout the game. So it is going to be a, it is going to be a game of betrayal, but it's going to be more within the spectrum of like, yeah, Animon Story plus Danganronpa, exactly. Yeah. If you've never played the Virtue's Last Reward series, by the way, play Zero Escape, friends. Please, please, please play Zero Escape. Zero Escape is so good. It's so good. Especially if you like Danganronpa even a little, play Zero Escape. You'll love it. Uh, okay. Mirror Mural. Read Nate's book. Then Movie Movie Game. Then Gachapon. Then, uh, then we'll work some. You've mentioned this a few times. What have I mentioned? Oh, Zero Escape. Yes, and I'll mention it. I'll mention it many more times. It's available entirely on Game Pass, and it's one of the best stories ever told. If you like mysteries, we've actually read page 35, but we have not read page 34. So we're going to read page 34. We do need some peaceful piano for this, of course. On Steam, sure. Yeah, so the first two games are available as a package on Steam together, and I think it's called Virtue's Last Reward. Um, you've heard of the first game, I guarantee it. If you grew up in my era, then you've definitely heard of Nine Persons, Nine Hours, Nine Doors. You've definitely heard of that. I'm certain of it. It was like, it was always at the GameStop. Did you sleep okay last night after all them spookums? Yeah, I missed out on Resident Evil, I saw. I saw that you played some Resident Evil and I really wanted to hop in. Nine games. 
Nine games you mentioned. Okay. <clears throat> this is page 34 of the Mirror Mural, uh, a book that I wrote whenever I was 10 years old. Just too young to write a book. Um, this is from Chapter 6, Alpha Phase 2. Uh, presented to you without context, because there's too many things to even give you context. We're just going to enjoy this time together, okay? <clears throat> what? Dying Dave stuttered as he looked among the hundreds of weapons in his torso and saw a single shuriken stuck out of his stomach that looked a little different than the others. On it was written, Explosive Hazard. He grabbed it and yanked it out, but he then realized Barry's plan. He looked at Barry and gave an evil grin. Well, pin a rose on your nose. Barry turned from the man, walking away without even acknowledging the bitter soldier. You'll see me again. Yes, kid, you sure will, Dying Dave screamed. The explosives attached to the hilt of the blade ignited in an instant. Well, clearly not, because we've had a moment to talk, but okay. Uh, Dave was lost in the smoke. Once the smoke finally cleared, we saw Dying Dave standing there, burnt to a crisp. His body looked nothing like it had before. Barry chuckled deeply to himself, hearing Dave crumple to the ground. Can't manage to fix a hole that big, can you, Dave? It won't be long, Dying Dave uttered in his dying words. He had a gaping hole in his torso, almost blowing him in half. He revealed an evil grin as his eyes rolled back into the back of his head, and a thin current of blood drained from his mouth. Dark, dark for 9.30 in the morning, huh? We all watched in horror at the sight of our transformed friend picking up the dead body and throwing it off the side to his partners. This wasn't our friend. This wasn't the Barry that I knew. This wasn't the Barry that I used to laugh with a short time ago. It simply couldn't be him. He'd never shown bloodlust as a child. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, nor had he ever been so cruel. His name is Dying Dave. Um, <clears throat> I win. Barry wiped the blood off of his face and began walking towards us. He underestimated my resolve, Barry claimed, as he gave them the cold shoulder. I'm willing to do anything to win. This isn't a mere quarrel with a sibling. This was a kill or be killed fight. So I gave him my all. Her creepy little kid, the announcer said to himself. He then spoke up. The next fight is Hexostro versus Nolan. This next monster that Nolan had to fight was a young woman who was very pretty, but strangely not attractive. I mean, she was, but she wasn't. Get it? <laughs> No, that's the end of the chapter, the end of the page. What does that even mean? What does that even mean? What does that even mean? I don't get it. I wrote it and I don't get it. She was pretty, but she wasn't attractive. Like she was, but she wasn't. You know what I mean? No, we don't. We in fact do not know what you mean, young Nate. Oh man. Get it? <laughs> Anyway, I'm writing a book now. I'm writing a game. Uh, let's see. Sneaky came in during the dollhouse shenanigans. Ooh. It was fun watching you play the game. It's a great game. Do you have a gun? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, man. I need to go back and watch those clips. I need to for sure. All right. Now we need a gachapon, of course, for Zando and a so movie, movie game. What's the deal with all of these gachapons? I mean, oh, no, come Jerry. on. Jerry, I don't know. I guess so. You can think someone is pretty but not be attracted to them. That's true. That's true. Maybe that's what I meant. Honestly, you'd have to go back and act. You'd have to ask 10-year-old Nathan. Current Nathan has nothing. How perfect. How perfect. No, maybe it'll focus. Ooh. Movie, movie game. How appropriate, huh? You get two. Two for the price of two. Alright. Who subscribed earlier? Somebody subscribed at the beginning of stream. With their prime sub. Chuck. Chuck, are you still lurking? I need to do your sub wheel spin, my friend. I need to do your sub wheel. Movie, 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 movie game. How perfect would it be if they both went together? That'd be pretty crazy. Alright, we need some peaceful piano gone. I'm going back to chill anime. Chill anime. Doo -doo. Okay, first movie, movie game for Zando. Folks, let Zando answer first. Four friends journey on foot to find a dead body, but end up finding something more important. A tiny armed T-Rex mind controlled by a bowler hat. <clears throat> Four friends journey on foot to find a dead body, but end up finding something more important. A tiny armed T-Rex mind controlled by a bowler hat. Do I get anything for being first in chess bragging rights? 
I mean, you are first. You are unequivocally first. We need a Pokemon Go thread in Discord? Sure. We do have a Pokemon Go section that we kind of treat as a thread. If you, uh, not lean on me. Oh no, do you want to take a second guess? You're very close. Not lean on me. You're very, very close. You did get the second one. I'll give you, I'll give you a mulligan. Um, so if you go to our Discord and you go under Let's Be Friends, uh, you can click on one of them will let you get into our Pokemon Go group, and sometimes people will have discussions there. But you're right. We should probably just have an, our own section for it, but that's kind of what we treat it as. So if you go under to Unlock Your Community, one of those will be Pokemon Go. Except I made all of them purple and impossible to see. Stand by, meet the Robinsons. I knew you knew it. I knew you knew it. That's why I had to give you a mulligan there. Okay. Uh, the financial... Okay, this is your second one. The financial crisis during the 2000s was triggered by the obliteration of the housing bubble at the hands of a military robot gifted consciousness by a lightning strike that also hangs out with Steve Gutenberg. The financial crisis during the 2000s was triggered by the obliteration of the housing bubble at the hands of a military robot gifted consciousness by a lightning strike that also hangs out with Steve G Gutenberg. Doop -a -doo. Doop -a -doo. The big short circuit. <laughs> Chat in the clap, man. Big, big clap. Big chats, big clap. I've never seen Short Circuit. Do I need to see Short Circuit? You guys said easy. I would have never gotten that. Do I need to go see it? I knew the big short. Do I need to add that to the top of my Just Watch? I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it, dude. I'll do it. I don't, even, don't even tell me. Don't even talk to me. I'll do it. Yeah, all purple is hard. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what I was thinking. I was trying to make them all like flow. I was trying to make it look nice. And I was just a real dummy about it. Zando is nailing it today with Movie Movie. Zando always is nailing it, dude. Short Circuit is fantastic. All right, I'm adding it. I'm adding it, folks. Let's go at it right now. Let's go at it right now to my Just Watch. If it's that good, if it's that good, then I need to know about it. Do, 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 do. Johnny Five is alive. I've definitely heard that before, so I obviously know some of the references. Short Circuit. I have never even seen this cover art. Very interesting. Maybe a hot take, but I always like Short Circuit 2. Uh, probably not. Probably because I saw it first and more. Just watch the first Short Circuit. Sneaky. Sneaky dropping immediate. <laughs> immediate response. <laughs> Sando's like, oh, maybe a hot take, but I always like the second one. Stinky's like, I don't even have time to talk to you about this. Just watch the first one. <laughs> Just brushed it. Brushed it under the rug. I love it, man. That's amazing. I love it. I used to watch Short Circuit 2 at the movie store all the time. All right, let's see if we can get this set up. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Oh no. That's 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 not gonna that's not good. That's not a good that's not a good thing that just happened. What just happened? That's not good. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, all right, we got it fixed. Crisis averted. The squeak is awful. Big short circuit two fan, I guess. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, you can't really see it. Let's see how this works. You know what I might do? Yeah, see, that's going to be at a weird angle, huh? Mm 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 mm. -mm. Let's try this. Let us try this. Boink. That looks a little okay. Let's 
feel like that's going to be disconcerting. Okay, that's fine. You guys can at least see. You can see what we're working on here. So we're going to do a little character design for this Untitled game. And I thought it might be fun to work on some of the basic, like, gist design work. So we'll do this for a little bit. I don't want to. I don't want to like scare everybody off. If this is something that does not interest you or engage you at all, then let me know and we can move on to Beacon Pines. But I thought it might be fun to treat these Thursdays, like I said, as kind of things that we just. I do whatever I'm kind of feeling the day. And today I'm feeling creative. So if you're down to clown, this should be fun. But if not, then let me know and we'll just move straight on to some video games. But we are going to play Beacon Pines. I will not go past ten. But 10 o'clock, for sure, we will play games. But I wanted to at least see if I could take a crack at some of these characters. Because, to be frank, my friends, I don't have time. Does anybody else not have time? Who has time right now? Because I don't. My time does not exist. Um, we were actually, I was just talking last night to uh, Logan about the fact that, like, we, so I get home, you know, at about 5 o'clock. I make dinner. We clean up dinner. 6.30, something has to happen. It always is 6.30. It's either bath night or I've got a stream coming up or something is going on at 6.30. And then at 6.30, uh, that lasts until like 7. 7.10 is whenever Nora does her lesson, uh, which is where we do Con Kids Academy, if you've never done Con Kids Academy. Um, she does that every night. It takes about 10 or 15 minutes. About 15 minutes after that, we go and we start getting ready for bed. We lay Quinn down. We get Nora ready for bed. She has to read her books. She does all her routines. She does her brush her teeth. She does all the things. Uh, I get done laying her down at about 8.30. And then I have like 30 minutes of video game time. My wife is asleep at 9. And then I've got like an hour of trying to catch up on either an anime or something that I'm watching for Checkpoint. And then I fall asleep. And I pass out. And then I wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning. And that's just our routine right now. And then I get straight to work. I do my walk and then I get straight to work. It's, it's like I have no time to do this. To do this right here. So this is this is time that I think could be used for this. But if not, please let me know that it's inappropriate and we'll do something else. Uh, let's see. Short Circuit takes Continuum. Did you pick the movies to watch at the store or was there a list you had to play from? It's the same reason Beverly Hills Cop 3 will always hold a special place in my heart. It's fun if you never saw the ones that came before. Uh, that is very fun. Um, I could choose whatever I wanted from 10 to 4. Then again, from 8 to midnight, as long as it was PG. PG-13 was OK if it was a superhero movie. That's very interesting. From four to eight, I had to run the monthly promo disc that played trailers and promoted random things throughout the month. Man, that sounds so fun. I Are you going to watch Blockbusters, Ando? Because I want to know your hot take on Blockbuster on Netflix. I think you would have a unique perspective. Whenever somebody says, I'm thinking of being creative, all I can think of is don't hug me, I'm scared, and now it's, uh, let's all agree to never be, never be creative again. Have you been watching the show? It is, it is all available on Channel 5 now. And I watched the first episode, and it was real good. I haven't watched the rest of them, but I was very excited for a, a whole TV series of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. Sure, when does it happen? November 8th, I think. I dropped it yesterday over in Random, uh, all the Netflix series. Um, but I really enjoyed Superstore, and I think it's from the same creators there, um, and Brooklyn Nine-Nine and all that stuff. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, I need to schedule in print. You know, it's all available on my Google Calendar. I'm not going to share it with you, <laughs> but if I did, it is all there. It's I, I keep it all. I'm very meticulous. I am a meticulous person. My wife and I are both like this. We're very anal retentive. We do things very specifically and to a schedule. God bless our children because holy moly, are they going to grow up in a neurotic household? All right. We do not mess with times. We are always on time everywhere we go. And if not, we're a little bit early. It stresses me out, actually, with all these events that I've gone. I'm not going to end up working on this because I'm going to be talking so long. Um, it stresses me out whenever I go to things like LTNCon and stuff like that because I'm like, when, when, when is the normal human time to arrive at things? Because I will be there 20 minutes early. I was to every Bible study. I was always there 20 minutes early. To every everything, I'm always early. I'm an early-minded person. I'm an on-time person. Okay. So we have 12 characters in this game, 12 monsters um, that will be in this thing. And so we just have to kind of pick. I figured we could design three of them today. Uh, just real rough designs. I'm not talking about anything like I'm not planning on fleshing out and inking these things right now. Um, so we could always just go with the first three on the list. Our first three on the list, uh, let's just divide this page out and do some do some real basic word work. You can see a little bit of my brainstorming process here. So we have our main character. You know what? Actually, it makes more sense to almost do the best friend character too. No, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. All right, MC is our first one. Rival is the second one. And then our third one is uh, Nervous Wreck. 
So what I think would be helpful is coming up with like what animal do I think they should be? Because all Digimon, not all Digimon are necessarily based on animals, but they are very much so inspired by certain things. Our MC needs to be as vanilla as can be. However, the trick with the MC is that they are actually going to have a polar opposite. So I'm going to do kind of a Terrier Mon situation where Terrier Mon and uh, what's the name? I can't remember the name of the other one, the little brown one. Uh, Lotmon, maybe? Terrier Mon and Lotmon are like um, color coded. They're like the opposites of each other. Uh, and so I'm thinking about doing that with their characters. So they need to be interesting enough that you're going to kind of see your opposite, your twin in a sense. My dad used to say to be early is to be on time, but to be on time is to be late. I agree. I agree. Now I know how Xando gets these movie Gumi games. Yes, he definitely admits to that. What's up, Pastor Savage? Welcome in. We're happy that you're here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I would ask how you found us, but your name is Pastor, so I feel like it's pretty clear. Pretty clear. Um, but we're glad that you're here. Welcome in. We're doing good this morning. We're doing a little creative work. I guess I need to change my tag. We're doing a little creative work, and then we're going to play some Beacon Pines here in just a little bit. Uh, let's see. Oopsie. Oopsie. It's tough typing on a vertical keyboard. So we're going to do a little creative work, and then we're going to get into it. I've heard that from many professors. I also had a professor say, if you can consistently be late, you can consistently be on time. Yep, 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 yep. Pastor Savage, I've seen you everywhere this week. Have you been all around safe, streamers? There we go. Yep, yep, yep. That, that was either going to be my guess or one of, our many, one of our many Christian friends here. All right. So... Let's think of some characters and some designs to work. The angst rival is almost easier than the MC. They need to be kind of an aggressive character, so I'm almost thinking kind of like a Garurumon-esque character. So let's look up. All of them are gonna be in their rookie form, of course. So Gabumon might be the better example to go with. Ugh, gross, Gabumon without his, without his thing is real weird. Gabumon without his hood is disgusting. All the overlapping communities, we love it. We love it. Well, we're happy that you're here with us this morning. How's your Thursday morning treating you so far? I want to be early for everything, but I don't usually have enough executive functioning and systems planning in advance to not run late with ADHD. I've recently stopped beating myself up for being late partially because of Stained Glass Rebel. That's good. Good, good. Doop -a -doop -a -doo. Haven't seen any of the latest. I'm so disappointed in myself because I was so excited and completely missed when it came out because of all the chaos in my life. Well, it is out there. It is out there and no time like the present, my friend. Yes, that's the point. Reinforcing the position here for the kingdom. Absolutely. Got to support one another. Got to live into that connection. So our rival is not just our rival, but is also our angsty rival. So I almost kind of want to base them off of gold from uh, Pokemon. Or like a Vegeta, you know? Is his name not gold? Was Ethan gold? Was Silver the bad person? Who was the evil person in Gold and Silver? For some reason, I always thought that they were gold. Their name was Jimmy in the anime. Silver is the boy, sure enough. Okay, so Silver is who I'm wanting to go with. A Silver-esque design. I wonder who could who inspires me off of Silver. Hmm. I'm almost thinking kind of like a fox. I don't really want it to be sly, though. Now I want to know what he said. He was savage towards me because I was being savage by my, to myself for being late, and what he told me made me laugh, so it lives rent-free in my head as a constant reminder. Stained has a way of doing that, man. Stained, stained, will, stained will take up rent space in your head. He's got some good zingers. All right, I do know. I do know. I want the nervous wreck to be a bug. Got to be a bug of some type. Could be a caterpillar. He's got to be very small, and I'm thinking small and like lengthy. So a caterpillar does make a lot of sense. Just walk back in the room to hear my name. I think. Yep, trombone's talking about you. A praying mantis is pretty fun. A nervous praying mantis. That's fun because they look so intimidating, right? Yeah, that could be fun. 
Let's look up a praying mantis for some inspiration. So they've got a distinctly triangle head and these really long bodies and these long gangly arms, yeah? So if we want to go with the triangle shape for the head, that's helpful. Could a praying mantis wear glasses? Like big, like Harry Potter style googly glasses. And then it could almost be kind of a thing where they, because their eyes kind of look like googly glasses anyway, so it could almost be a thing where they like, their glasses are their eyes. And then maybe they could express with their eyebrows. So they could have like big exaggerated eyebrows that float off the glasses. But the question is their mouth. A bifocal, that's also real fun. I'll stick with this design for now for the big old Coke lens, but that could be really fun to expand it out. Because then you'd have one eye. Then it would almost look like an eye patch, though. If you had, like, one googly glass eye and then the other was a little bit more defined of a mantis eye. Not like this. I like this. I like this. So they have little, like, teeth. Yeah. But I don't know if that works. I almost feel like they need to have a mouth. I feel like all these characters need to have a mouth. Not if you put the old school chain to it. Honestly, they could still have a chain. They could have like granny glasses. Did anybody else's granny have, have a chain on their glasses? Yeah, I like that because then you can really express. I feel like with a nervous wreck, they're going to be going through such a wave of emotion so consistently that it could be really fun to do like the, the, the like sad eyebrows, you know, it could be really emotive with them. Okay, so we need we need a bigger face. We need a bigger face to work with here. So let's expand out our triangle. Definitely a triangle shape. And then I almost feel like like the bean mouth would be kind of fun for him. And then maybe two holes for a nose. Does that look too much like a gecko? I feel like that's almost a gecko aesthetic. Do you see that? Whoop whoop whoop. Let's see if I can find the camera. Play find the camera. Yeah, I almost feel like he looks too gecko-ish. Lizard-ish when you put the nose on there. But I do like the bean mouth. The bean mouth is fun. You think just pinchers for the mouth? I think pinchers on the side of the mouth, maybe. Do a little of both, a little column A. That might that might distinctify it a little bit more. But I do think the nose is too much. Mantis don't have a nose. But he does need antennae. Yeah, that's kind of fun. He's cute. He's kind of cute. So now as far as his like arms, he does look a little antish. Hmm. Oh, hey, thank you for the follow, Southern Gothic. Appreciate you. Welcome in. Look up Zorak. Yeah, look up Zorak. <laughs> yeah, okay, Space Coast. Love it. Yeah, yeah. So he's he's got to be like a meek Zorak. I like that. That works a lot, actually. Yeah, his little, his little like, gangly body. So if that's his, like, meek head, and then he could have, like, a little hunched body. So let's see. Let's just try and draw, like, a quick, a quick sketch of his. I'm not going to do as much detail on the face this time, but we're going to do just the triangle. And then let's look at this guy's awkward body. His body is like, it's like a big long oval and then real thin skinny legs, at least in the picture that I see. And then real exaggerated lengthy feet. Yeah, that's, that's Zorax, that's Zorax shape. Real gangly. That's his kind of shape there, yeah? You agree with that? I mean, the lighting is so weird. 
That's his kind of body type. But yeah, that works to have the like meek self mixed in with that. So this looks almost devious. I wonder how we could make it meeker. Bye, T-Bone. Kind of worried about my STEM class today. Since last class didn't go well for everyone, I'm looking forward to the rest of my wild students. Have fun. I hope that it goes well. I hope that it goes well. Sorry that you're stressed about it, but hopefully it will go better than you think. I'm optimistic for you. So we might get one character design done, <laughs> or at least started. But I like that a lot. I feel like Zorak, Zorak body type definitely works. I like the gankliness. They have two joints in their limbs. Yeah, they do. They have this, they have the long gangly arms or the long gangly hands and legs. They also technically have another set of legs. But the question would be, would I want them? Would I want all six legs or would I just want, just want four? Um, I'm going to write down just some notes that I don't forget. So I'm going to have emotive eyebrows. Uh, let's see. Bean mouth ask. Gotta have the gangly hands and feet. What I gotta figure out is how to make him look more. I mean, I feel like the arch over really does make him super meek. And then the glasses also do. That's a good start. This is a good start as far as this body type goes. Putting that head on that body, I think would work really well. We could also make him shorter, but he needs to be he needs to be lean and gangly, doesn't he? So, looking at a like real life mantis, they have like a real thin top half and then they get way bigger. So that could be another thing that I did. If you give him four legs, then he doesn't have the hunch and can just be long. I don't know, I feel like the hunch really, really lends to the like, ooh, I'm like nervous. I kind of like the hunch. But I do think maybe leaning him out. And I agree with Static that the body will, the body is definitely already helping. He does not look like an ant once you Consider the rest of it. Yeah. I think that works really well, actually. I really like the Coke bottle glasses. Those are those are doing it for me. I don't know if the pinchers are necessary or not, but I think. I'll keep them for now, but this might... I mean, obviously, all of this is very preliminary. This is literally the first time I've drawn the character, so who knows. Okay, let's take a deeper look at him, then. Or should we should we move on to the rival? Should we let this just be pure brainstorming rather than actual, like, crafting, you know? Especially if we only have seven minutes left. Uh, let's see. So our rival character, I still... I kind of am digging. I feel like he needs his own little Jiminy Cricket. Or like he needs a little friend or he needs to be more Jiminy Cricket. Yeah, just more brainstorming. I haven't decided if I'm going to make any of them clothed or not. Digimon really weren't. So if I'm going with the Digimon aesthetic, I feel like they really don't need to be. Same with Pokemon, really. I'm going to go with no clothes. Like a small little friend or something that helps him on his on his adventures. Could be, but then there's a whole other character that does that con that confuses the storyline a little bit. I'm afraid, but I like where your head's at. If we ever, it's like let's say we ever take this game and we turn it into a comic. That'll be his his ind independent comic. Will be that he has a little friend. But I like it. If I roam the naked, uh, roam the naked. If I roam the neighborhood naked on Halloween, I can say I'm just a charmander. Exactly. It definitely that adds up. 
Perhaps a small totem or something he relies on, like a Linus blanket. Ooh, that's very fun. What would he be rubbing together? Because I feel like mantises rub their little, maybe they don't, but I feel like he looks like somebody that would like rub his hands nervously. So what could he rub together? Could it be like a fidget toy? Could he, could he have anxiety? That's kind of fun. I like the idea of maybe it, maybe I'm going to put, I'm going to put it just as in like a parentheses of like maybe anxiety fidget toy. I like that a lot. A, a Rubik's cube could be fun. And it like it, it lines like it, it doesn't line up whenever he's ha like upset and it does line up perfectly whenever he's confident. That'd be fun. IRL their other limbs together. Yeah, I feel like they did too. Good, 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 good. Cleaning or something. My goal to write three characters may have been a bit uh, presumptuous, huh? But this is a strong, this is a strong design for our first character here. A rubber band, like a fitness band that he's just constantly playing with. I like it. Let's see. I wonder if there's another character that I already have an idea for. For all the nerds, you need to have the colors in the right places. I would just use a straight up model. I would find like I would find a um, an example online and copy it color for color, for sure. What's up, Orange Crush? How we doing? Welcome in. Notes have been taken. So another character, instead of rival, let's do another character because I feel like I've got other characters that are better fleshed. This is a character that if you've ever played Danganronpa, um, this is going to be kind of like a Gundam character where he looks very evil but secretly is not. So he needs to be a character that almost immediately is, is like the suspicion needs to be on him instantly or them. I shouldn't say him. I haven't got character uh, genders yet. Uh, so they need to look incredibly evil. So, I mean, obviously the devil is like a, a pretty, a pretty common like imp mon, you know, kind of an imp mon take. Let's look up imp mon. Let's see if there's any inspiration we can get. A bat is a good start. What are some weird looking bats? What are some other types of bats? Oh my gosh, this giant golden bat is the cutest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Are you kidding me right now? He's the cutest. His nose is so long. Oh, I love him. Twenty-eight types of bats, gargoyles, snakes. Snakes almost two on the nose. A little brown bat. There is not. An, there's not a bat named a little brown bat, dude. <laughs> that cannot be. <laughs> that simply cannot be true. I like how bats have this little like horn on their nose. The spotted bat is the cutest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Why are his ears so big? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I love him. I love him so much. You guys, I want a little bat. I want a bat friend now. Are you kidding me? All right, what is a Cornish Rex, the endo? Flying Fox Bat. Oh man, the Honduran White Bat is super interesting looking. 
They're just little puffballs. <laughs> I might keep that in mind for another character. I love it. I love bats. Oh my goodness. When did I become so obsessed? Do I need to go adopt a bat, you guys? Flying fox bat. Let's look up that. Cornish Rex. I do like the idea of a cat because cats come across as evil even when they're not. Lurk for work, see Perry. Let's look up a flying fox bat. Super cute. If you're killing your idea, you want them to be suspicious first, right? I know. I know. I'm looking at all of them and I see them and they're so cute. They're so cute. Okay, hang on. Let's look. What are evil looking animals? <laughs> Let's just Google. I saw uh, hyenas. I've seen your recommendations, but I, I like, I want an inspiration that's specific. Oh, it's that weird bird. Gosh, that bird is so strange. Scary animals. I think the fox will probably be another character. I have a character that I think would be a fun fox. Partial to hyenas, they'd be matriarchal, so a female would be bossy and a male would not. So it'd need to be... Wolfish, no. Don't want to do fishes. I don't want to do fishes. Stop showing me fishes! No, I don't want a fish! Stop showing me a fish. Vampire squids are gnarly looking. Um, stop showing me fish. How many fish are there on this list? Oh my goodness. Is it a fish list? No, it just says scary animals. I'm convinced this is a, this is a fish list. Oh no, wait. Here's the hairy frog. Ugh. He's so nasty. Fish are scary. Agreed. Fox, hyena, snake, wolf. Ooh, gharials are pretty cool. They're like the crocodiles with the super long, thin snout. Angler fish man. They would be outright Terry. Uh, scary. Hmm. I'm tempted by the Gyriel. I'm gonna I'm gonna just keep a page open with the Gyriel. That's a really unique animal. I feel like I've never seen a Gyriel in a game. There is a Komodo dragon eating a goat. <laughs> Holy moly! Holy moly! I've never seen a Komodo dragon eat a goat before! That's wild. Ooh, we're on to spiders. Spiders are pretty spooky. Pretty spooky, spooky. We already have a bug, though. We don't need to do two bugs in a row, do we? Scorpions. Scorpions are pretty scary. I'm really to I'm I'm thinking about this Gariel. Everyone calls him the wrong thing. That's very funny. Yeah, I like the Gariel. I want the Gariel. I'm gonna write it down just so I don't forget. Gariel. Um no one can get his name right. His name could be Gary. <laughs> I do love that. Yeah, Gariel's super cool. Okay. You could always do a beetle. A beetle? Ooh. Okay. They also have a triangle-shaped head, but I already have a triangle-shaped character. So we're going to do a circle with a real long nose. Let's, let's keep our circle. And then he's got to have... 
the real long thin snout. So that's going to be really tricky. And it almost goes out at the end. I almost need to do kind of like a kind of like that. It's kind of like Gonzo. No, I'm not liking that shape. Not digging the shape. Let's shift it up a little bit. The snout is integral. But he did look a little bit like an anteater. It's got to be exaggeratedly long. I mean, this, this snout is so long, it's ridiculous. So they almost have, like, flat boxes boxish heads. It'll be a little bit more rounded than that. But they're very they're very their heads are very thin, you know? And then just an exceptionally elongated nose. With a little bit of growth at the end. Kind of getting stoat vibes from inscription, actually. So what can we do to make him look even angrier? He's got to always be kind of mad and irritated, even though he's not. He's kind of got an RBF. They have this like really unique eye pattern. Kind of floats around a little bit. And then dips in the center. Yeah. That's basically what it looks like. A Gary all. I like that better. R A F. Uh, let's see. I like his eyes. I think his eyes are powerful. They look really intimidating. An axolotl. There's probably a character in there that would work for an axolotl. Yeah, that's definitely it. That's definitely the Gariel. And we're 10 minutes over time. Uh, let's see. And he's got to be, he's going to be like big and bulky. Or it could be a she. I keep saying he, uh, he, but it could be very well she. I guess the reason that I'm going with a he is because I want them to be immediately suspected. And they need to be. Won't that almost be a unibrow? Yeah, it does kind of have a unibrow. So the Gariel has like a very big oblong shape. So almost like stocky. So they could be an upside down triangle shape. crossed arms, you know.
Yeah. I think that's strong. They've got webbed feet, so it needs to have webbed feet. And just aggressive. Boom. Boom jams. The evil but not character, the Gariel. I love it. I love it. Look at that. We got two characters designed. That's a good start. That's a good start. So we have our Nervous Wrecked and we have our Praying Mantis. Excuse me, we have our Praying Mantis that's Nervous Wrecked and we have our Evil But Not character that's a Gariel. That feels super unique. We got a great inspired start, folks. I appreciate your help. Appreciate all the thoughts and comments. We'll try to do this every Thursday, at least for the first like hour of stream, just kind of catch up with each other and uh, try and design some stuff. And I'll share with you guys kind of where we're at with the story and uh, how things are coming along. I intend on making this game, but admittedly, whenever it comes to game development, it's kind of just, it is what it is, you know? It happens how it happens. We're gonna take a quick break, a quick restroom break for me, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna play some more Beacon Pines. Sound good? I'm excited for it, I can't wait to find out. Maybe we'll beat this game today, that'd be really nice because I, I would love to get to the conclusion and not have to wait. My daughter has a unibrow, Are you saying she's suspicious? Because you're right. All right, quick intermission, be right back. Running on a nine volt, what am I supposed to do? Hook him up to a car battery? <laughs> I need more power. Give me more power. power. <laughs> you can't, oh no, a thing shot out. All right, well this, maybe that was the problem. There's a little thing in there. He has chronic fatigue. He needs some help. Now, if I like wave him around, woohoo! Woo! Just not feel it. It's because it's not Christmas yet. Brings out the best in me. Unlike the violating heat of August, that fills the space between the dirt and the heavens. Only a handful of moons prior to the golden treetops and the ritualistic pumpkin and maple that stirs our hearts and reveals our need for stupid, cheery things. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to, it almost worked. Some lines really worked well. All right, next stand. Uh, so in between the stands, it's Shorty, oh my angel, you're my darling angel. Closer than my peeps you are to me, baby. The artist falling asleep, laying he said, to rest in the fading foliage. On the ground, folding up the data, smaller, smaller glimpses of light, and here I am. <laughs> we back, we back, we back. Dope, dope, dope. I'll be lurking by any by the time you get back for meetings. Have a great rest of the day. We'll see you, Marwit. Cameron plus Deanna, we appreciate you. Appreciate the support and hanging out with us. Girls are always sus. Always just a little bit. Both our girls are certainly sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky. Boys are chaos, girls are devious. That's what I've discovered so far. Okay, let us change our game. We're gonna play some Bacon Pines. Do a quick catch up summary for everybody just to kind of remind everyone where we are in the game and what's happening so far. Uh, so we are our little main character who is a goat friend and we are writing our book, our story. So it is a branching narrative uh, where we literally get to just make decisions based off of words that we get and find in the game. You'll understand more once we get into it. But we've already discovered a few endings. All the endings so far so far are very bad. Um, we have died a couple times. Our friends have died a couple times. Uh, things are not going well. But there are some strange things going on in the town of Beacon Pines. Whenever we got there, um, we, our parents are, let's see, our dad is dead, our mother is missing. And uh, our grandmother lives with us, but she's a little sus too. I so want to stay to watch the game, but I have to lurk. I may be back soon. All good, Hunter fam. Well, I mean, it'll be there. VOD will be there. All our VODs go up on our YouTube channel as well. We have a YouTube channel and a VOD YouTube channel. So you're always able to watch these back after the fact. Um, let's see, what was I saying? Grandma is sus. Mayor is sus. We know that there's this new place in town that's kind of like the capitalist hall that they're throwing a big convention and a big party and they're definitely sus and they're trying to assimilate the whole town to them. There's also something weird going on with the uh, 
like old factory that has like a super wealthy family that started the factory, but now the factory's closed down and there's something strange going on at the factory that involves resurrecting people from the life of, of death. Something, I don't know, some kind of weird green goo that gives people strange powers. Uh, our best friend is uh, a little fox guy. He's a little nervous and anxious and a little dim-witted, but he's a lot of fun. And then we've also made friends with a new kid in town um, who is a sly cat who in one scenario has been touched by the green goo and changed her hair color. In the other one, we don't know much about her, but she's new in town and she's living at the rental home next to the rich people. She's living on their property, so she has some connection with them that we don't understand yet. Hopefully that's a good recap. Um, if not, I would encourage you to check out the uh, playthrough over on our YouTube channel and remember what happened. We're gonna get right on it. Let's get right into the news. And it's full screen, so hopefully it'll just capture it here quickly. Currently playing. Space. Yeah! And we love Fellow Traveler, folks. If you aren't following Chapter Fellow Traveler... Four. Is that so loud? That felt so loud. Dinner with the Mood Wills. Okay, maybe it's just loud for me. It doesn't look that loud up there on y'all. Oh, yes. So we're getting dinner with the cat's moms. The cat's moms... Uh, invited us over for dinner. Ilona Moodwell We're pretending to be her best friend. Change. A gardener at heart, she understood the necessity of change, relied on it even. But there was a difference between the controlled world of her plants and this cluttered cottage in a strange town. Almost done. Nellie was a blur of activity, digging through boxes. Sorry, love, couldn't find the dishes. We'll have to make do with paper plates. Dinner went by without much conversation. As she watched Beck and Luca finish up their pizza, Luca's Ilona our let name. herself relax into the chair. The things she cared about were still here. Nellie finally had the job of her dreams. Beck was beginning to take root. Beck is the friend. Ilona's task was simply to tend to them. She could do that. So, Luca, tell us a bit about yourself. Where do you live? Oh, I live with my grandma. Uh, over on the other side of the river. Your grandma? Where are your parents at? Beck Manners! It's all right. My dad passed away in an accident at the fertilizer plant six years back. Oh, dear. My mom's been missing for a few months now. Like missing, missing? Luca's eyes were fixed to his plate, pushing a chunk of pineapple around with his finger. Nelly was the one who eventually broke the silence. Luca, how did you like the pizza? Oh, it was good. Very good. Normally, we'd have put more effort into Ilona dinner. nervously gestured toward the boxes. We aren't fully settled in, and Beck had mentioned that it's your favorite. I'm sorry, are we just skipping the part where he said his mom was missing? Beck! I'm sorry, Luca. This move has us all a little Luca tired. Luca wiped his face with his sleeve. N no, it's fine. So, Beck said that you moved here for work? Beck gave Luca a swift kick under the table. Ow! I mean, what brought you to Beacon Pines? Oh, you were right the first time. We're here for work. Nellie won't tell you this, but she's a brilliant chemist. Uh-oh! Uh-oh! I don't know about brilliant, but I do love it. She's brilliant. Perennial Harvest just made their newest lead researcher... I made her their newest, newest lead researcher of deep engineering. She makes it sound more impressive than it is. I'm just happy that I get to make a difference in the world. Perennial harvest is at the forefront of evolving agriculture into something more useful than sprinkling water and excrement on the ground. Luca glanced over to Beck. She seemed to be holding her breath. They are sus. What Nellie means, Luca, is that there are different ways to grow plants. Yes, some people talk to their plants and hope for the best. And some people happily leave their job to allow a loved one to pursue their dream. You swore Beck you didn't- Beck slammed her fist into the table, perhaps harder than she intended. Hey, Luca, how about some dessert? I actually had to meet my friend Rolo soon. Luca glanced outside to gauge the time. The sky was darker than he expected, filled with- Oops, looks like there's a storm brewing, Mr. Wyden. I should get going. Oh, I didn't know there was a rain, any rain in the almanac. Yeah, almanacs aren't that useful around here. Luca wiped his mouth one last time with his napkin and started to get up. Thank you for all the pizza. It really was good. I'm having, I'm having pizza for lunch. 
especially after that. See you at the festival, Beck. Beck's so cool. Wait up. I'll walk you home. Surprised, Luca turned around. He knew Rolo could be prickly around new people. But Beck seemed cool. Rolo would warm up to her eventually. Probably. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds began to... Oh, I want both. We're going to break. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to break, revealing patches of star-filled summer night. Moonlight filtered down, shimmering in the treetops. Sure, you can meet Rolo. You're not going home? No, I promised Rolo I'd tell Luca him about- Luca stopped himself mid-sentence. Promise you tell him what? Spit it out, bub. We're thick as thieves now. If there's a juicy secret, you've got to tell me. Okay. You can come to the treehouse. I'll tell you both what happened. Man, he trusted her quick. Heck yeah. I mean, I do too. But just because I think she's the main character, not because I know Luca she's truly worthy of it. skulking by the gate. So you're telling me there's nothing mysterious or creepy about this place? It's mostly boring and empty. I refuse to believe that. Big spiked gate, looming mansion, rich reclusive owners. It even smells shady. Beck grabbed the wrought iron bars and shook the gate. Mark my words, you decadent nightmare house. You will reveal your secrets to me. Is she crying? Oh. Oh. What did you do? First of all, I told you so. Second, hide. Have I met that guy? Oh yeah, I have. That's Eris Valentine. Who's she talking to? Shh. I expect you to return that suit in working order. Of course. It's him. It's the guy that killed us earlier. So this guy in a hazmat suit killed us earlier. As long as everything proceeds as planned, there's nothing to worry about. The only thing I'm worried about is what's rightfully mine. If that means making some unsavory alliances, so be it. I couldn't agree more. There comes a time to suspend hostilities. I'll deal with our common threat. Now this is what I was talking about. Beck's voice was an excited whisper. Proper shady stuff. Someone in a suit like that tried to grab me yesterday. Seriously? Shh. You do understand that when all this inevitably fails, I will deny everything. I wouldn't expect any less of you. You just worry about your part in this and let me handle the rest. I can't wait to see that look on that Rube Kerr's face. Carr's face. I can't remember how they say it. Yes, the truth will come to light. I'm still surprised you're so comfortable with the potential collateral damage. If there's one thing I've learned, it's that change is painful. Wow, I was expecting Shady. That's just flat out super villain talk. If you don't mind me asking, why? Why are you doing all of this? The mysterious figure retracted their mask. Hair pushing out from all corners. Who's it gonna be? Oh, grandma! It's our Graham Graham! Graham Graham killed us earlier! <laughs> what? Grandma. Gra okay, there must be more than one hazmat suit. Otherwise, Grandma killed us earlier. Family. A chill ran down Luca's spine. His vision blurred. Beck stifled a sharp wince, and Luca looked down to see himself wrenching her hand. An answer I can certainly respect. She looks so silly. <laughs> Gran! Everyone is sus. Who's bad? Is everyone bad? Just remember, keep everything nice and normal until the festival. I don't need lessons in rousing suspicion. Gran gave Eris a curt nod and disappeared into the night. What? What? Everyone is evil. Chapter five. What big ears you have. Lucas sat shivering in the bushes, staring at his feet. 
After checking to make sure the coast was clear, Beck gave him a gentle tug on his sweater. What's wrong? Uh, you look like you've seen a ghost. Why were you so scared of that old lady in the hazmat suit? That was my gran. That was your gran? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm sure there's a perfectly reasonable explanation for all of this. Let's just get to the treehouse and figure things out there. Lead the way. I definitely remember where the treehouse is. Up here, I think. Nope. Down here, I think. Oh. Uh-oh. <gasps> what? <laughs> oh, no, it's these guys again. <laughs> For the last time, there's nothing to worry about. Of course, we're not the worried. The board finished writing with a scratchy flourish and looked up. Just dotting her I's and crossing her T's. Well, maybe try minding your P's and Q's. Mr. Nuncreed, arms crossed over his palms. He's bad too. He killed us earlier. Sigh. If there's anything you need knowing, you'll know it. Absolutely. If you'll just sign here acknowledging everything is accurate, we'll be out of your hair in a flash. Oh, for the love of... He snatched the pad and scribbled his name so hard the pen nearly snapped. There. And would you like my eternal soul as well? The clipboards looked at each other for a moment, almost pondering the possibility, then broke into laughter as they walked away. <laughs> Bye, creepy. I don't really feel like talking to you. You killed me. Hi, Mr. Nuncreed. Luca, let me give you some advice. The next time someone you don't know asks to hear your thoughts, give them a good hard bop right in the kisser. Oh, Gran tells me just to keep away from the clipboards. That's good. That's good. Your gran is a smart lady, Luca. Speaking of which, you better run along home now. Too dark out to be wandering on your own. Yeah, I agree. Anywhere near you. It's a bad place to be. Oh, hey, what's up? Where are you at in the book now? The answers you see could be revealed to you in due time. The question is, the figure intoned, are you prepared to live with the truth? I'd say not. Another day, another dollar. See you tomorrow, Z. Have you noticed how all the perennial harvest folks order the same drink? Decaf cappuccino with extra foam. Why? I don't know. I just thought it's a little odd. Pretty weird for sure. Well, the customer's always right. See you bright and early tomorrow. <sighs> I can't wait. Don't like them either. Don't like them either. Don't want to talk to them. I guess I should, though. William Kerr and Gus Valentine proudly surveyed the half-covered festival banner. It's all coming together quite nicely. Couldn't have done it without William you. gave a half-hearted shrug. I'm not so sure about that. Nonsense! That reminds me, I wasn't able to thank your sister for her contributions. Yeah, she's been, uh, indisposed of late. She doesn't like me much, does she? Oh, no, that's not it at all. She's just uh, been busy. Of course. Regardless, I would be forever grateful if you could pass on my thanks to her. <laughs> the History Museum adds a real air of import to the whole affair. And we couldn't very well celebrate the story of Beacon Pines without including the Valentines. My father was a great man. <laughs> You're darn tootin' he was. Kerr locked his arm on Gus's shoulder. But I mean the entire Valentine family. <laughs> Present company included. Now, can I ask you something, Mr. Kerr? Call me William. Ask away. William, why are you doing all this? Gosh, I've never felt more needed a compelling reason to throw a party. Not just the festival, uh, all this. There's got to be a hundred down-on-their-luck towns out there. Why is Perennial Harvest so invested in helping Beacon Pines? You know what I love most about the agriculture business? 
seeds. Seeds? Yep, little bundles of potential. With a glimmer in his eye, Kerr gestured grandly toward the horizon. What does that mean? <laughs> you treat a seed right, nurture it, feed it, and it can grow into something truly special. You see potential here? Undoubtedly, the seed of greatness is already under our feet. All it needs is a little nudge and the right leadership, of course. Oh, good night, Mayor Valentine. I don't like him. He's killed us once, too. All right, Mayor Valentine, you're one of the few people that hasn't murdered me yet, so I guess I trust you. Can I talk to you? Nope, nope. You're done for. Okay. Never mind then. Oh, this is nice. Yeah, the treehouse is just a little further from here. So that's your... What's your buddy Rolo like? Rolo? He's, uh... Rolo? Not particularly helpful. Sorry, I've just never thought about it. Lots of energy. He's funny, even when he's not trying to be. Things have been tough for his family since the foul harvest. About time you tell me what this foul harvest thing he is. It's a kind of long story. Hit me with the highlights. Okay. There used to be a fertilizer company here called Valentine's. They were kind of a big deal. Ooh, big deal fertilizer. It was a big deal to us. Their stuff really worked. Farmers loved it. So Valentine's grew and grew. Beacon Pines pretty much grew around it. Most everyone in town either worked for Sharper Valentine or used his fertilizer. Things were good. I'm sensing a big but. Around six years ago, Sharper Valentine suddenly died. And something changed. Hang on, my dad also died. Coincidence? Changed how? Could have been a bad batch. Maybe it was in the water or air or soil. Nobody knows. But all the crops died. And everyone blamed the Valentines. The foul harvest. Yeah. Valentine's fertilizer went out of business. Half the town lost their jobs. Sheesh. The next year the crops came back, but something was different. You plant a crop, do everything right, and it's sort of a crapshoot what happens. And no one knows why. Nope. I take it Rolo's farm got the short end of the stick. Yep, for some reason, their farm was hit harder than others. That sucks. Things have gotten harder since perennial harvest came to town. Or better. The Beacon Pines Reborn Initiative? Yep. First thing they did was give the, give the town a deep scrub. They even put us up in hotels. I'm sorry, what's that now? They closed the entire town for over a week? Well, I guess now we know how the underground facility was built. They even put us up in hotels, one town over for a week until they decontaminated the groundwater. Hmm, we better get going. Yeah. It's about time. I was about to give up and go home. Who's the new kid? Name's Beck. You must be Rollo. <laughs> I see my reputation precedes me. Welcome to Mission Control. Rollo waggled his head with pride. You'll find we've spared no expense in construction. I've seen worse looking piles of junk. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, Luca. You know the security concerns we talked about? Yeah. Well, while I was waiting, I made some, uh, <clears throat> improvements. Let me lock this baby down for a little test infiltration. Can't be too safe these days. <laughs> I love it. He goes all out, doesn't he? Always. So what am I supposed to do? <laughs> what am I supposed to do with it? Oh, I see.
Another one? <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Come on! Come on! There we go. Nice! Did it! Where did you guys get all this junk in the first place? There's a guy in town named Jeff who trades us junk for snacks. Junk food for junk. Nice. So, pretty sweet security, right? It was imaginative, I'll give you that. Luca, are we sure we can trust the new recruit? I'll vouch for her. Thanks, I guess. Oh, Luca, you promised, you promised to fill me in about the Valentine Warehouse. Mm. Luca sucked in a long breath. So, like I said, there was someone there. What were they doing? I don't know, but the place was lit up and active. Maybe they were squatters. I don't think so. It seemed more organized. When the man pulled me in, I saw some sort of equipment running. A man pulled you in? Yeah, but I got away. You keep saying it was a man. They were wearing a mask, right? Yeah. Then it could have been a woman. How did you get away? I grabbed a rock and broke, or, or something, and broke their mask. They let go, and I ran. Dang. That's intense. No wonder you freaked out when you saw your grandma. Yeah, that's the other part. On our way here, Beck and I saw Eris Valentine meeting with Gran, wearing the same sort of hazmat suit. Rolo let out a low whistle. And they weren't there for idle chit-chat. It was a proper clandestine meetup. So, let me get this straight. There's an operation in full swing at the Valentine Warehouse. You were almost abducted by a strange man or woman in a protective suit, and then you saw your grand in the same suit talking to Eris Valentine? Pretty much. I'm beginning to think this town is kinda awesome. Lulu and Luca shot back a look. No offense. Then so we can logically conclude aliens or alien zombies have infiltrated the town, and their leader is your grand and she tried to murder you. Uh, first of all, for the last time, there are no aliens. Second, it couldn't have been my grand at the warehouse. I broke that person's mask to get away. The mask grand was wearing wasn't damaged. She certainly couldn't have replaced it. That would be nonsensical. But she's definitely hiding something. Maybe. Your grand is weird, but she might be the most boring person in the universe. All she does is sit around all day making jam. What, should, what could she possibly have to hide? I don't know. We haven't talked much since she moved in. Moved in? Your grand isn't from here? No, she came a few months back to take care of me. After his mom went missing. Did you know your grand before? Not really, no. You don't know your grandmother? It's been years since I'd seen her. Well, she's probably not your grandmother. I think our grandmother's not our grandmother. Look, don't take this the wrong way. Are we sure your grand is on the up and up? Luca gazed out the window. I'm just saying, it sounds like strange stuff has been happening since she showed up. We could say the same thing about your family, but you're right. Luca, your grand is hiding something. And Pa always said, folks only bury stuff worth digging up. We need to investigate your house. If my grand really is hiding something, don't you think I would have noticed by now? That's kind of the whole point of hiding something. I guess you're right. Gran's been leaving the house for hours at a time this week. I'll call you two tomorrow when the coast is clear. And we can start getting to the bottom of this. I'm always game for a good snoop. You can count me in. Chapter 6 Man, we're Secret booking through layer. chapters out of nowhere. Summer forged ahead. Secret layer, the that's very funny. The only seemed to grow colder. Luca walked home slowly under the pale starlight, cautious to avoid any more surprises lurking in the shadows. Reaching home, he slipped quietly into bed, half dreading what they might discover the next day. Uh, what time is it? I loved his little jammies. Make sure there's nothing to discover around here. I'm coming, I'm coming. Give me just a little more time. Rollo, what on earth is that? Hmm? Huh? That ridiculous thing on your head. Oh, this? <laughs> it helps me think. You're gonna need a lot more of those. Joke all you want. We'll see who's laughing when I crack this case wide open. Coast is clear? Yeah, whatever she's been up to this week, it's been keeping her busy most of the day. Very well. The game is afoot. 
Luca and Beck rolled their eyes as Rollo strutted across the room. If I were a Gran, where would I hide my deepest, darkest secrets? Perhaps where you might least expect it. Rollo flung open the cabinet with confidence. Ah! He coughed as a veil of dust hit his face. I think it's safe to assume anything that dusty isn't what we're looking for. Or maybe the fact that, or maybe that's what she wants you to think. Then again, any good detective knows not to trust their first hunch. First hunches are for suckers. Well, that's not good because my first hunch is the mysterious room upstairs. Eureka! She's lit a fire in order to burn the evidence. She keeps that fire going every day. Dread, it may already be too late. Just think of the mounds of documents lost to ash! Okay, I'm gonna stop you right there. Can we just think for a moment? Luca, is there anywhere Grand doesn't want you to go? Yeah, the closet upstairs. Uh, so maybe it stands to reason that we should check there first. No dice, it's locked. Well, well, well. <laughs> Look who stands to reason now. I have no idea where the key is. If it really is important, then she probably keeps it with her. Anywhere else? Uh, she has her berry bushes. Who has ever thought, I'm going to take this important thing and huck it into a bush? True. Anything else? Maybe something out of the ordinary? Well, she is always worried I'll break her fancy dishware in the kitchen. Doesn't matter anyway, I can't reach the latch. A look of realization crept onto Luca's face. All three kids snapped to glance at each other, then sprinted in turn toward the kitchen. <laughs> Alright, Rolo. This is your time to shine. Ah, uh, yes. You've called upon my expert detective skills. And now I shall proceed Before with... You finish, Luca scrambled up Rolo's back. Doop -doop. Hey, this isn't my idea of detective work. Every squad needs a good lockpick. And every good lockpick needs a sturdy head to sit on. This is beneath my standing. Stop complaining and hold still. Got it. The three crowded around the hutch to peer in. With the glass doors opened, a perfect porcelain display gleamed in front of them. Their eyes searched for anything amiss. But the only distinct feature was its impeccability. Well, that was anticlimactic. Yeah. I don't really know what we were expecting. Like, oh, hey, let me just yank on this random I teacup and... On one of the teacups. <laughs> it slanted forward with a hollow That's hilarious. Click. The entire hutch began to rustle. That's very funny. <laughs> First guess. Seems like your gran has been doing some remodeling. Dude, only two types of people have secret lairs. Evil masterminds and superheroes. So which one do we think she is? We're about to find out. Okay, so more of an unhinged conspiracist vibe. Oh, wow. This cannot be good. We need to look around before jumping to conclusions. Luca jostled each cabinet drawer in turn. Only one was unlocked. He fingered through the file. Is that a cabinet, punching bag? <laughs> had a bulging folder labeled Walter. Walter. For a long moment, he just stared at it. Who's Walter? What do you got there? It's my dad. Looks like some of his old medical files. Your dad was a doctor. Luca nodded, and caressed the label with his thumb. Well, are you gonna read it? I. Here, let me help. Carlos swiped the folder from the drawer and began leafing through the pages. He whistled to himself, barely looking at the text. How do you, how about you actually read some of it? Nunsik, the uh, dense documents such as this are a lot like a cheeseburger. It's best to skip straight to the middle. That's where all the meaty bits live. Wow, I had no idea we were in the presence of a preeminent scholar in dense documents and cheeseburgers. By all means, proceed. He stopped at a page and mimed holding up a monocle. Ah, here we are. Follow-up examination of Terence Wilby. Patient shows further signs of paleness and malaise. Body temperature continues to drop. He now describes soreness of muscles and joints. This is similar to the symptoms exhibited by Mrs. Wilby just a few days past. 
Still waiting on lab results from Roll Joseph. Looked up with heightened surprise. See? Creepy. Yeah, that's kind of disturbing. Who's Joseph? That's Mr. Nuncreed's name. What? Wait. His finger traced across the page. There's more scribbled in the margins. Could it be contagious? Mr. Wilby claims the tap water at his home has been contaminated. Perhaps environmental? Lab results only raise more questions. It's like he came back to this report later and made some notes. So it might be related to something Roll else. Through several more pages. Here, the writing looks shaky. I just couldn't help her. That disease or whatever progresses so fast. With his wife passing, Terence's condition follows close behind. Exacerbated by the loss. Enough is enough. I need to take matters into my own hands. Staring blankly at the cabinet this whole time. What does it say next? Rolla rustled the folder, trying to lose more pages. That's where it ends. What? There has to be more! Luca frantically shoved the remaining cabinet folders, trying to find another labeled Walter. Luca, I think that's the only one. It's alphabetical, see? What did he mean enough is enough? How did he take matters into his own hands? Luca slammed the drawer shut. A spider web of string connected photos of people from the town, interspersed with hastily scrawled notes. Well, she sure has kept herself busy. Uh, is your grand a serial killer? Cause I'm starting to get a vibe. Don't be ridiculous. Sure, she's just tracking the movements of everyone in town, out of the kindness of her heart. She put little symbols by some of them. Yeah, Mr. Nuncreed has a check mark. The clipboards are all inside a big circle. My moms are both on there, both with question marks. Gus Valentine has a question mark. Eris has a question mark that's been crossed out. Uh, Mr. Carr, Mr. Kerr has a bullseye. The killer has chosen her next victim. We don't know what any of this means. Whatever it means, it's probably not good. I guess that doesn't know anything. What do we have here? Barrels marked caution explosive and jam jars? There's enough jam to feed the whole town. What kind of incendiary jam is your grand making? Incendiary, cool. New word. She wouldn't have had me walking around town delivering bombs. Right? Only one way to find out. Casually spun open a lid and dipped his finger in the jam. Not a good idea. Not a good idea. Wouldn't recommend. Huckleberries. He smacked his lips. A hint of brown sugar. And ink. What? Rollo plunged his hand in the jar, fishing out a soggy slip of paper. <gasps> Secret messages. Uh -huh. He the slimy note to Luca and licked his fingers clean. It's addressed to Mrs. Fratelli. A grand jam gram? It says, last night I used the disguise Eris provided to scout the location. The timing window should be possible. Operation Spark Plug, plug is a go. Oh man, are they doing a heist? Whatever it is, it can't be good. So more a bombshell than a bomb, am I right? You're new here, so I'll let that slide. But I'm the bad joke guy around here. They crowded around a worn-down old map of Beacon Pines. Cool, this looks like a treasure map. Not every old map is a treasure map, Rollo. Oh yeah, but every treasure map is an old map. Can't fault that logic. Look, there's even a pathway drawn on it. It starts at the entrance to town, and if Rollo we follow it... Path with his finger. It he leads right at the end to... Point. Town Square? That's the fountain in the middle of town. What a weird place to hide treasure. Um, Rolo, that doesn't look like treasure to me. The end of the path on that map has the same symbol as the explosives over here. So it's not hiding treasure? Real bummer. Rolo, what's the thing that you've been excited about for the past month? The festival! Ugh. Did you just... Oh, gulp. Did you just say gulp? This feels like a gulp kind of situation. Everyone will be gathered near the center of town. 
She's going to blow up the festival. Not if we stop her. Uh, what was that? Luca looked up from the map. What was that? No, I heard it too. That was the front door. Which means someone just shut the door. Which means someone's upstairs. Shh, quiet. Hit the lights. Beck flicked off the light. And they became statues in the dark. Overhead, creaking floorboards bent under slow, deliberate steps. The kids looked up, the tilt of their necks following each football. I'm so anxious. Then suddenly, it stopped. Without realizing, they'd been holding their breath. All three exhaled shakily and glanced at each other. A muffled male voice broke the silence. Mm. Hello? A final few footsteps reached the entrance above them, and the voice now echoed down the stairs. Hello. Anyone down there? The three kids shuffled to the corners without a peep. As he began to descend the stairs, the man's voice... Thump. yoo -hoo. I'm not here to hurt anyone. Thump. I'm just here to help. Just to... At the bottom step, the man paused, squinting to search the room for signs of life. Huh. Yes, it's Mona nothing. Shifted suddenly. Luca gave him an intense, chastising look and whispered through clenched teeth. Rolo, don't. It was too late. Rolo was already inching toward the stairway. He screeched as he charged toward the shadowy figure. Flaming chicken goob! All his weight, Rolo tackled the man to the ground. Rolo? Mysterious creepy man? Anyone there? From the dark corner, they saw something move. Well, they didn't know if I had it in me, but there was only one way to find out. Holy crap, Rolo, that was awesome. Did you just kill Lucas that person? He scrambled to the hunched figure on the ground, pressing his fingers to the man's neck. He sighed with relief. He sure clobbered him good, Rolo. He's knocked out cold. As Beck flicked back on the light, Luca and Rolo both gasped in stereo. Mr. Tolliver. Chapter 7. The Interrogation of Hiram Tolliver. I also don't remember his voice. Still unconscious, Mr. Tolliver slumped heavily in a shoddy old chair. His hands were bound with rope, his feet tied with some loose string. The kids huddled in a circle, discussing their plan. One thing was certain, they couldn't just let Mr. Tolliver go. They needed to know what he was doing in Lucas' house. After some deliberation, it was decided. They would run the classic good cop, chill cop. <laughs> They'd run the classic good cop, chill cop interrogation. Love it. I'll handle this. Just gotta play it cool. Luca walked calmly to the light switch, flicking it off and on a few times. Mr. Tolliver shook his head, gathering his wits. Golly, I sure got my bell rung. He looked over to find Luca, who returned a calming grin. Sorry, Mr. Tolliver. This was all a big mistake. Luca, what's going on here? Why do you have me strapped down? No one's fault, really. Rolo just got a little startled. Rolo's here? Rolo and Beck emerged from hiding to give a timid wave. Well, all right. Mistakes happen. Uh, you kids gave old Hiram a good scare. Well, let's just get me out of these ropes and call Luca it even. glanced over to Rollo and Beck, who replied with skeptical looks. Mr. Tolliver, why are you in my grand's basement? No, I'm here to help, of course. Help with what? What's my grand up to? <laughs> if you just cut me loose, I can show you. How do I know we can trust you? Mr. Tolliver exhaled with disappointment. Luca, have I ever done wrong by you? No. And since your grand moved to town, haven't I been nothing but welcoming? Yeah. Why would I turn my back on your family now? It's just... All this stuff seems pretty weird. 
a board with names of people from town, an archive of my dad's old disturbing patient Make a notes. Gesture to the corner. Barrels of explosives. I can't explain everything. You just need to untie me. You kids deserve an explanation. Luca looked again to roll Owen back. This time they shrugged. Luca began to slowly loosen the bindings. No! We do not do this! Mr. Tolliver gently rubbed his wrists. That's a good lad. This will all make he sense in time. Perceptibly toward the stairs as he spoke. You see, this town has secrets. A very dark past Before indeed. Before the kids had even noticed his movement, Mr. Tolliver was at the light switch. A past that must be brought to... He punctuated to... his final words by flicking the switch and rushing up the stairs. Light. Beck darted to the wall and turned back on the lights. It was too late. Rolo confirmed what they all heard. He just locked us down Mr. here. Tolliver's muffled voice came from behind the door. I wasn't lying, you know. This is for your own good. You kids just keep tight down there and let the adults they handle this. They looked bewildered at each other. Play it cool, huh? Not now, Beck. They heard the staccato thump of quick steps exiting the house. The kids looked down in resignation. This isn't how it goes in Hank Atomic. For some reason, they'd always assumed it was up to them to save their town. Luca opened his mouth, hoping to conjure some magical words to make this right. Only a hollow croak escaped. The end. All right. Well, we certainly aren't going to find back to the drawing board. Back to the drawing board. All right, so we need to try some other things. The only other thing we've got is rumble. That is one thing that I will say about this, is there are so many options it feels, but they they limit me pretty, pretty, pretty drastically. I only have one thing I can choose. I want, I want other branches. Answered for him as the clouds above begin. They rumble with thunder. Thunder. Thunder, thunder. Uh. Was incendiary not a thing yet? I just realized that. You sure we can make it home before the storm kicks off? Luca surveyed the roiling clouds. I'd say the odds are good. Maybe you should stay here and I'll just make a break At for that it. that moment, the heavens opened up, unleashing torrential rain. Care to recalculate those odds? Hurry inside, you two, before you catch cold. Uh-oh. Are we staying the night at Bax? Luca, Nellie will keep trying to reach your grand on the phone. In the meantime, you two hold tight. Sorry, not much to do up here. Most of my stuff is still in the boxes. Mind if I poke around? Be my guest. Luca squinted into the eye hole of the microscope. This looks wild. What is it? Gum. Gum? Luca adjusted the slide with his fingers to get a better look. I'm tracking the structural integrity of gum with increasing amounts of chewing. Chewed that one for 47 Luca wiped days. His hand off on his sweater D and gave a nervous laugh. It's weird, I know. Beck looked down, timidly tapping the ladder with her feet. You think it's weird, don't you? A little. But weird can be cool. Oh, wow. Rolo and I have a radio just like this at the treehouse. Probably not exactly like this one. My mom and I tore the whole thing down to the bolts. Filled it with some state-of-the-art vacuum tubes. She seems pretty awesome. She gets carried away sometimes. I think she feels guilty for working too much. So when she does have time for me, she showers me with high-tech overcompensation. Luca flicked at one of the toggles. I bet you can get all sorts of stations on this. Not out here in the boonies. You wouldn't believe the stuff I could pick up back in the city. But around here, it's all farm reports and static. Aw, oh, shucks. Luca bent Folks, don't forget about our question of the day, exclamation point Q or exclamation point QOTD. We'll pull that up. And uh, the question today will pop right up whenever you want to answer it. What's up, Frost? How we doing? Luca bent down to examine the bouquet of Touching wilting flowers. The odor, they were well past their prime. Pungent! He if you're on our Discord, it is just our question of the day from the Discord, but I thought we would bring that over to the Twitch channel here. Happy trails from Coach Walker and all the Fairview Condors. Boy, you weren't kidding about poking around, huh? Oh, sorry, was this from your old school? Most recent one, yeah. 
Some schools gave me going away cards. Some did flowers. When, we're, when they're really trying to feel good about themselves, they do both. So you've moved a lot. Yeah, that's the thing with having a brilliant parent. There's always a better job somewhere else. And back. What's up, Perry? The mystery's getting good! We've died several times now. These flowers should last longer if you put them in some water. And that's the sort of thing I would do if I cared. Well, you cared enough to keep them is all. Luca, can I ask you something? Of course. Point. Anime jump? <laughs> Dang, didn't that hurt? I'll be honest. That hurt more than I expected. <laughs> I love her so much! I love their little friendship. Well, at least she looked cool doing it. Beck took a moment to watch the rivulets of water running down the window. Do you ever feel alone? Like, even when people are around? Well, Rolo can be pretty absent-minded sometimes. I'm serious. Does it ever feel like your family doesn't care what you want? Um, it didn't used to feel that way. I know Gran loves me, but sometimes when she looks at me, it's like she's looking at a problem. Luca took a deep breath, exhaling slowly. I know the feeling. How do you deal with that? I guess I haven't yet. But one thing my dad told me when I was little, don't hold a grudge, especially against yourself. If you try to hold it all in, you're gonna pop. So then what do you do when you don't know what to do? Dad never got to that part. Something I figured out on my own though, you gotta do something, anything. Here. What are you doing? I don't know. Something. We're gonna register our complaints with the storm. Listen here, you miserable universe! Stop jerking me around! I just want things to go back to the way they were. Everyone tells me it's gonna be all right. That things are gonna Luca change. Let out a feral scream that echoed into the night. Ah, every time something changes, everything gets worse. Screw this down! Whoa. Let me try. Moving sucks. I hate it. I hate that. I hate it. Why can't I just deal with it and be happy for my mom? Why can't we just stay somewhere? Ah! His voice dropped to a trembling whisper. I just want to be a normal kid. Luca brushed off her shirt and straightened up. There. Is this our A24 movie moment? <laughs> I love it. Wow, I... I actually feel a little better. As abruptly as it began, the storm abated. How are you guys? We're doing good, Frost. How are you? How are things going? I'm still hooked with Marble Snap, but not as hooked as you are. I can I can confidently say I'm not even six hours into the game, so I'm I'm not as hooked as you are. But I am enjoying myself. I uh let's see. I've been losing a lot this morning. So I've not had a very good morning with it, but still enjoying it. Playing catch up, I feel that. I feel that. Thanks, I needed that. Me too. I should head out before the rain starts up again. Sure, I'll walk you out. I'm able to set it down, but I'm definitely playing a lot. I won four in a row today and called it quits. That sounds really nice. I've only lost one game so far, says Ando. I, I had that experience at the beginning. I had that experience at the beginning for sure. Even yesterday, I was still doing really good, but it's like once I've reached, uh, I'm so I'm so far behind you, Frost. I'm so far behind you. I'm at like 17, and it's like already starting to get some losses in there. Sounds good, Luca. Don't let the universe jerk Beck you around. Beck gave Luca a light thump on the arm before heading in. I like Beck a lot. Chapter 5. Friendly. F the air was heavy with a hard rain's residue. The smell of wet It things. was a hard rain's residue. Despite his dreary surroundings, Luca felt at peace. He'd never shared those details about his dad with anyone. Level one to ten is all bots. Yeah, pretty much. I got I got the occasional real person, but it was definitely very infrequent. You're at fifteen, Zando. You've already caught up to me. Not even Rolo. But it's not like this changed anything. Rolo was still his best friend. Adding Beck to the group would help balance things out. Everything's better in threes. People in fifty don't snap, and I hate it. So many retreats. Ugh. Yeah, I don't like retreats. I don't like retreats for sure. This is what Luca told himself as he headed to the tree. But I'm also too chicken to snap.
Let's go to Rolo. Oh, it's Batgirl. I forgot about her. Hey, Don. Tracking down a lead? You bet. I heard a juicy new rumor. Turns out when Sharper Valentine died, he left behind a peculiar last will and testament. Peculiar how? He didn't just give his kids an inheritance. There were conditions. Like what? The document stipulated that Eris had to take on a child as a reward. A kid our age, who just showed up to town one night with a lawyer. Solomon? Bingo! So Eris was forced to take care of him? Yep, or she would have lost everything. Why would Sharper care so much for some random kid? Rumor has it, old Sharper sowed some wild oats. Well, that explains the way Eris treats him. Poor Solomon. How did you find all this out? A good reporter never reveals her source, Luca. That is spicy. Once it was brought up, I paused Ari Village and opened Snap. <laughs> yep. Yep, 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 yep. I did download the Steam Early Access. I thought about it, but... I gotta finish this game. I'm, I'm actually, I'm tired of having games like Snap where I don't ever finish them. I really like rolling credits on games. And so the fact that I haven't been able to scratch that itch has been very frustrating to me. Excuse me, what are you doing? Just locking up for the night, sir. How wonderful. <laughs> I can only assume this means all festival preparations have been completed ahead of schedule. Um, <laughs> not exactly. The storm set us back a bit and it's getting late, so we all decided to... You all decided. Mm, yes, sir. I was unaware that your job involved deciding things. We are all here at Perennial Harvest because we believe in creating a better future, right? Yes, sir. Very much, sir. Do you want to be the one to tell this town that we failed them? No. That we gave up because there was a little rainstorm and we all got sleepy. Of course not, sir. Good. Then it's decided. Y yes, sir. We'll work till the task is done. See that you do. Our harvest awaits. Last night someone played Odin on Bar Sinister and it took like three minutes for their turn to end. For real though, Bar Sinister is going to, uh, is gonna be what makes me rage quit this game. It's like every round now gets a Bar Sinister. Rolo, are you still up there? I'm sorry, Rolo isn't accepting visitors at the moment. Come back never. I had only oh. ever heard him speak in this stiff yet gentle tone a few times. Who is this? Is this Rolo or not? And it always meant one thing. You're upset. It is Rolo. Oh, what makes you say that? Maybe because my best friend abandoned me for no reason. I, I didn't abandon you. I'm just a little late. Rolo scoffed. The rain held me up. Liar. You weren't even home. What? The storm got bad, and I got worried, so I went looking for you. Imagine my surprise when I made it to your house and you weren't there. I hadn't made it back yet. I'm not a fool, Luca. It doesn't take all day to deliver some jam. No, I... The storm rolled in out of nowhere, and I got stuck after dinner at Bex. Luca stumbled uh... on his words, knowing he'd said too much. Beck? Dinner? What the heck is a Beck? She's a new kid in town. She's actually kind of cool. You'd like her. She needed help convincing her parents that she'd made new friends. New friends? I spent all day waiting for you, and you were off making new friends? It's not like that, Rolo. You know, while I was waiting, I made some upgrades to Mission Control. It was gonna be a surprise. But you took so long, the storm knocked it all down. Just like you knocked down our friendship. What does that even mean? Luke became instinctively angry in response. Both boys were now shouting across the distance. It means you're a bad friend. You don't care about me. Of course I care. I knew, get, I knew I'd get in trouble waiting so late for you, but I kept my word because that's what friends do. Oh, wow, what a noble sacrifice you made. Easy for you to say. Your grand doesn't even care. A whole lot of A24 episodes happening all of a sudden. 
You can stay out as long as you want, and you wouldn't even get in trouble. Seriously? You're acting like I chose this? Is If that's what you think, then maybe you're the bad friend. changed to a calm, yet more intense anger. Maybe Pa is right. Storms bring more than water. This one brought out the real Luca. Stop quoting your Pa's nonsense like it means anything. Yeah, well. Ooh, Rollo. Rollo! At least my paw is still around. The words hung in the cold night air. Ooh! Ooh! Dropped, knowing he'd crossed Ooh, line, that's rough. But it was too late. Luca, I... I... Good night, Rollo. Dang it. Brutal! Absolutely brutal. Didn't know we were going to get so emotional. The back nine of this game. Luca dug through his old stuff, not even sure what he was looking for. Rolo, what a jerk. Call me a bad friend. Ooh, I'm Rolo. Look at me and my amazing family. I want to break something. Why can't I break anything? I want to, like, break the lamp or something. I guess I'm just never supposed to make new friends. Ooh, weep. Grand cooed gently Luca? from the hallway. You slept straight through breakfast. Luca, are you all right? I'm fine. Just don't feel like getting up yet. Okay, I'll leave this oatmeal by the door. I've got to run out and take care of some things. Okay. I'll be back later to check in. Sure. Luca just wanted to be alone. He waited to hear the sound of the front door closing. Boing. If Rolla thinks I'm still going to the festival with him, he can shove it. Oh. Boing. I bet Rolo's still going to go to the festival. He's going to be miserable. Good morning, Doc. How we doing? The worst part of that Odin turn is that it ultimately did nothing and they still lost. It just wasted time. Am I supposed to do? Yeah, we got to get back in bed. Luca dozed off again. Luca, I see you didn't eat your oatmeal. Wasn't hungry. Well, just in case you get hungry, I'll leave a sandwich here, too. Thanks. Rolo came by. What did he say? He wanted to talk to you. What did you say? I told him you weren't feeling well. Good. So, your plan is just to sit in your room all day? Pretty much. Well, I need to pop away again for a minute. If you decide to end your pity party and go outside, I think it'll do some good. Noted. Luca still couldn't bring himself to go out. Besides, if he ran into Rolo, he'd have to actually confront the situation. Nate, I'm doing great so far. Just rolled out of bed because my dog was sitting on top of me. As the dog do. Man, I really am th I'm throwing a pity party. There's never anything interesting at the festival anyway. Okay. Supposed to knock that book down. Smack! The Adventures of Hank Atomic. No. The complete Luca first volume. Luca carefully opened the cover and began to read. Rollo had received it for his birthday, a special hardcover edition with behind-the-scenes commentary and bonus art. Rollo cherished it, but asked that Luca keep it at his house. Luca wasn't sure if it was because Rollo didn't trust himself with it, didn't trust his sister around it, or just wanted an excuse to come hang out at Luca's more often. Whatever the reason, Luca didn't mind. But it had stayed right there where Rollo had stashed it ever since. Now, at the foot of his bed, Luca lost himself in the pages. He'd read it all before, but at this moment, it somehow felt sentimental. He was well into issue number five when he heard soft footsteps from the hallway. 
Luca. Another little friend came to see you. A girl named Beck Modwell. I don't remember how you say her name. Modwell. She said you met yesterday. What did she say? Is she here? She was just dropping by. I told her you weren't taking visitors today. Oh. She seems nice. Yeah. You had a fight with Rolo, didn't you? Can I come in? Maybe later. All right, then. I'll leave dinner on the kitchen table, in case you want a bite before bedtime. Without realizing it, Luca had pouted away the entire afternoon. He once again felt the weight of it all <clears throat> and allowed his weary eyes to close. Luca stood in a vast black expanse. He looked up at his father standing beside him. Walt was working a straw at the bottom of a fountain glass, trying to collect the last bits of milkshake. Dad, where are we? Taking a final loud gurgling sip, his father peered up from the glass. He jangled the straw playfully with a warm smile, then lifted the empty glass as if to point into the darkness. The source? Luca's eyes followed his father's gesture. What? The source, my dude. In an instant, he was sitting in front of a blazing campfire. Across from him sat a large figure in a yellow hazmat suit. The figure's voice was a scratchy echo. Well, if it isn't the man of the hour, make yourself comfortable. Luca held his shivering hands over the flame to warm himself. It doesn't work that way here. Their yellow gloved hand pointed to the base of the flame. It's a cold flame. See? Luca peered at the base of the fire. It wasn't wood that was burning. It was Beacon Pines itself. Whoa. Tiny buildings, freezing and crumbling as they were consumed by flame. Luca could see small shadows moving in the burning city. People. Luca leapt to his feet. We've got to help them. The figure gave a dismissive wave of their hand. Why waste energy helping people who can't even help themselves? The figure bent down to examine the panicked crowd as they desperately tried to stop the flames. They only care about what's right in front of them, not like us. Luca's voice was a trembling whisper. Us? The figure slowly stood up, grabbing its helmet with both hands. With a jolt and a twist, the suit emitted a gasp. A cloud of torpid mist escaped, slowly revealing the face within. Luca's own face looked back at him. Older, worn, distant. The sensation was oddly familiar, as if he'd caught his own reflection by surprise in the mirror. The doppelganger smiled. I tried to help once. He gestured towards his face. And all it got me was this. Luca staggered back. You aren't me. Luca felt a hand catch his shoulder. His father was there again, beside him. Every choice sets us on a path. This is the end of one of your paths, son. Luca watched his older self shake its head ruefully, its face twisting into a cruel grin. Welp, Dad. If you wanted him to see this, far be it from me to disappoint. Luca watched in shock as the figure took a confident step forward and plunged into the flames in a flash of cold light. He was gone. What does all of this mean? Luca felt a reassuring squeeze on his shoulder. Just remember why we choose matters just as much as what we choose. Luca woke up to see a hazy figure at the foot of his bed, silhouetted in the morning sun. Mom? No, dear. It's only grand. Luca rubbed his eyes. The kind, concerned face of his grand came into focus. How are you feeling? Fine. Anything you want to talk about? I don't feel like talking. That's just as well. How about you sit there and listen a bit? Whatever you and Rolo fought about doesn't matter. But he... Grand silenced Luca with a gentle pat on the leg. Fights between friends happen. What was said doesn't matter. The important thing is that it's not the last thing you ever say to each other. But he said stuff about Dad. Well, do you think he meant it? No. He was just mad. Mm hmm And did you mean any of the things you said to him? No. Good. One must appreciate friends in their best moments and accept them in their worst. That'll preach. Now, get your little bud out of bed. The festival's today. You don't want to miss that, do you? I guess not. 
Seems like a good opportunity to make amends with Rolo, doesn't it? A reluctant nod. So, buy him a corn dog and apologize. But he's the one that. What did I just say? Buy him a corn dog. That's a good boy. Everything's better with corn dogs. I need to get going now. Got some last minute festival business to take care of. I'll come find you at the fountain a little after lunch. All right. I love you, Luca. Love you too. Truth. Luca took a deep breath. Okay. Yeah, only something's happening at the festival Chapter that Gran's six. part of. Through thick and thin. Despite Luca's bitterness, Gran was right. He needed to hash things out with Rollo. A big fight changes the nature of a friendship. Whether, in the end, it is for the better or for the worse, all comes down to understanding. If one is not careful, the same familiarity that builds the strongest of bonds can become the wrecking ball that shatters them. Luca emerged from seclusion, taking in the crisp festival air, but the events of the day weren't on his mind. He had to find Rolo. Rolo! Oh, it's Rolo's sister. There you are! Luca, Rolo wanted me to tell you something. What is it? Roxy rolled her eyes, shaking her head. <sighs> A space adventure, though you needn't buy it. If ye be brave, go somewhere quiet. Uh, Roxy, I don't... It's a riddle, Luca. My goofy little brother wants you to find him. Luca looked down and kicked at the dirt. Look, I know you two had a fight. The only thing more annoying than my little brother is my little brother without his best friend. So I'm doing him this one favor. Now I need one favor from you. Whatever it is that went down between you two, squash it. I like Roxy. The library. It is obviously the library. But there's so many people to talk to! I gotta talk to him. Unique New York. Unique New York. <laughs> huh? Oh, don't mind me. Just warming up for my big ceremony Mr. speech. Kirk pointed to his grinning mouth. You gotta limber up the old gab box. You nervous? <laughs> no heavens no. Well, break a leg. Give me the gift of a grip top sock. How goes the beetle hunt? Pretty rotten. I haven't seen so much as in... Don't know that word. And it's not just the beetles. This morning I couldn't find any critters at all. It's like everything that buzzes or skitters just packed up and left. I'm sure they're out there somewhere. Maybe all the commotion of the festival just spooked them. Yeah, maybe that's it. Welcome to our festival. Don't forget to come back later for Mr. Kerr's speech and the perennial harvest festival sign reveal. You don't want to miss it. I don't know who perennial harvest thinks they're impressing with this ridiculous festival. Totally. The town's still falling apart. The weather's still cruddy. And this harvest season looks like it's going to be worse than last year's. You said it. No amount of corporate pandering is going to change any of that. Exactly. But the lemonade at the drink stand over there does look pretty tasty. Fits. I'm still gonna be mad at them. I'd just rather be mad while sipping some delicious lemonade is all. Ain't moving. Jeff was staring into the distance with a wistful look. Hey, Jeff, everything all right? Yeah, 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 everything's fine. I mean, used to be fine. Just ain't right these days, you know. I really do, actually. Jeff turned to Luca with a furrowed brow, then gave an understanding nod. Yeah, you do, don't you? For a moment, the two now shared that same wistful gaze. <laughs> Every single time. Yup. Fireworks? Wait for it. Not explained sound, once again noted. Like clockwork. What a bunch of drones. <laughs> okay. Okay. I got to go to the library. The most welcoming of welcomes. Would you like to share your thoughts? We always strive to improve. Nope. Who is this man? 
This is the first time I've seen this many smiling faces since the foul harvest. I had my doubts about perennial harvest, but I must admit they do put on a nice party. Okay, so this is clearly all fluff, huh? Piper, you're actually taking a break from studying. He wanted to see what the fest, uh, the festival fuss is about. I can't help but notice you still brought your backpack full of books. Luca, backpacks can carry more than books. True, true. What you got in there? Books. He met his old friend's eyes and was greeted with nothing but ice-cold anger. Heavens, this is no time for fractured friendships. I agree. I was able to return the perennial harvest safety suit you borrowed. I don't think anyone noticed. Good. Now, will you tell me what you needed it for? It was a favor for an enemy of my enemy. This isn't going to harm Mr. Kerr, is it? All you need to know is that it's good for the family. A little sus. Everybody's so sus! The library. Somewhere quiet. Oh, well, I definitely thought he'd be here. <laughs> hey, Luca. Adam's eyes lit with excitement. I've been expecting you. Bravo on deciphering the first riddle. The first. Oh, you didn't think that was all, did you? Rolo does go all out, Adam doesn't he? straightened up and cleared his throat as if preparing to sing. Ahem. <laughs> on Planet Fopple, you may take issue. When the fifth king dies... You'll need a tissue. Kato stared at Luca eagerly. Get it? Want me to tell you? No, it's okay. Let me figure it out. All right, when you find it, bring it here to be verified. And if you decide you want a hand, the offer still stands. Well, I definitely thought it was one of these issues of the comic. Luca grabbed the five pillars of success. Once you've got a book, you can either bring it here to me, or you can grab a different one. Luca grabbed The Issue with Self-Help, a helpful guide. Luca grabbed 500 meals for one big pot. Nope. None of those. Luca grabbed Natural Photography, Volume 5. Luca grabbed The Modern Science of Atomic Radiation from the... Luca grabbed The Adventures of Hank Atomic, issue number four, from the shelf. I think that's probably it. Luca grabbed The Adventures of Hank Atomic, issue number five, from the shelf. What was it again? Kato removed his you book from it. the desk and replaced it with Luca's, turning on. As he slid the book under the purple light, two words glowed. The Adventures of Hank Atomic, issue five. Luca clicked his tongue with recognition. Rolo's cipher pen. He used to write secret messages everywhere with that, and only I had the special flashlight needed to reveal it. But I lost it. Well, apparently he traded Jeff for the purple light bulb. Parted with his entire Halloween candy stash. Oh, Rolo. Now let's see here. Kato began flipping through the pages, stopping when he hit a glowing word. Get away with such a grift. continued flipping. Only found in Grub Cart Reaching the end of the book, Kato looked That's it Grift In Grub Cart Grift and Griffin Griffin's Grub Cart He wants me to go to Griffin's snack stand oh, Brilliant I guess you're off then Good luck on the rest of the scavenger hunt Thanks, Kato Yeah, I definitely know where that is Who is Griffin? I guess maybe down here. This is definitely the area that I've been in the least. Yep. Hey, Griffin. Did Before Rolo come? Luca could finish his sentence, Griffin handed him a corn, a dog. corn dog. Well, that's it. Bought and paid for. Enjoy. I thought there was supposed to be a riddle or something. Taking a sizable bite out of the corn. Yuck! It's cold. Oh yeah, that's been sitting here a while. Rolo, want to make sure you give me that one specifically. Well, Luca that's just. tongued at his cheeks. Feeling he reached into his mouth and pulled. Oh, he come on. The bits of corn dog to read the slip. I'll pick up when you need some pep near the fountain Luca up the finished step. finished off the remainder of the corn dog. This is getting to be a whole thing. Mm. 
Near the fountains, up the steps. Oh, whoopsie. There you are, Luca. There's no way you am actually doing this. It's way below my pay grade. Oh, come on, you big stiff. Let the kids have some fun. Fine. But Rollo owes me one. He his hands around sarcastically as he began. What takes flight but has no wings? Your final task a friendship brings. See, that wasn't so hard. I feel cheapened somehow. I think it's sweet. Good luck, Luca. Takes flight but has no wing. Oh. Hey. Hey. Did you find the comic book? Yep. And you got the corn dog. Yeah. I know it doesn't make up for what I said, but here, you've earned this. Oh, sheepishly handed Luca the balloons. Flight. Nice. Thanks. You didn't have to go through all this trouble. I'm sorry I got so mad. Dang it. You were supposed to let me apologize first. Oh, sorry. Now you've apologized twice before me. Just let me do this. Luca, I'm really sorry. With everything that's happened, with your mom and all, I've always wanted to be there for you. To be a good friend, you know? When you said you were hanging out with someone else, I, I kind of freaked out. Rollo. Still my turn! I felt like if you needed some new friend to help you, it meant that I wasn't good enough. But that was selfish and wrong. I, I was wrong. I'm sorry, Luca. Okay, apology over. You Luca can talk now. threw himself at Rollo, hugging him as tightly as he could. Rollo, I don't deserve you. I don't deserve you either. That's why we deserve each other. So, what else do you want to do today? We could snoop around and try to find some info about your mom. Snoop where? We could probably sneak into Perennial Harvest HQ while everyone's at the festival. Aren't you curious about all those, all the stuff those clipboards write down? I am painfully curious, actually. What if we get- what if we get caught? I think that I've had enough excitement for one week. Let's just make the rest of the day about us. Really? Yeah. The rest of the world can wait one more day. What if it can't? <laughs> you know, I have been wanting to get some work done on the MCDC emission control. The aim is a, <clears throat> a bit unpredictable. That sounds perfect. <gasps> Are we gonna fix the thing so that it can attack the peeps? That's super fun. Oh, I almost forgot. I ran into your grand this morning. She asked me to give you this. I'll wait for you inside if you want to read it now. A ladder? Luca, some things are going to happen that might be difficult for you to understand. What? Grand's if telling honest, us the whole truth? I hardly understand them myself. But whatever happens, I need you to know that I love you. Aw, Grand. This is fair to you. You have already lost so much. What are you going to do, Grand? We both have. I wish there was a simpler way forward, but if there is, I haven't thought of it. God knows I've tried everything I've done. I did for you. Gran, what did you I do? I hope someday you can accept that. Love, Gran. I love you too, he Gran. folded the paper into his pocket and had it up the ladder. What did she do? What's up with the letter? Anything you want to talk about? Maybe later. Sure, whenever you want. You know, you really didn't have to go to all that trouble just to apologize. I know, but we'd been looking forward to the festival for weeks, and I ruined everything with my big mouth. This was the best way to make sure you still had a good time without me. Rollo. What the what is going on with this game? Perry, I'm so into this game. I don't know how much you've caught in the VODs, but you would love this game. I'm all about it. Luca was Rollo. at a loss for words, but that was fine. Words aren't always necessary. I'm so into the mystery, and I cannot wait to find out what it, how it turns out. Festival seemed nice. Was it nice? We can still go. I haven't caught the VOD. You gotta watch it. No, this is fine. It reminds me of like a Gravity Falls Twin Peaks kind of experience. Well, there's always next year. Sadly, this was untrue. Is this gonna get dark? It already really has. We've died several times. A distant rumble shook the treehouse. Huh? What was that? Oh man, we missed the fireworks. I don't fireworks. think those were fireworks. 
It was not fireworks. Ah, I love it. It was something the boys couldn't possibly comprehend. What does that mean? Something as old and cruel as time itself. Those are not words that make sense. What are you talking about? shockwave of cold tore through the room a bitter unfathomable chill i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry did mr freeze just show up what what before they could react, that was not where i thought it was they going case them in ice two boys what's up steven how we doing only to be cruelly separated by a malevolence beyond reason and so, our story ends in a silent treehouse turned statuary, in a town brought low by its secrets, sits a pair of friends alone together. For the what rest of are time, you talking about? The end. What are you talking about? That can't be the ending. I won't. There are. We are just going to have to sort through. You can't just. You can't just freeze me solid and expect that to make sense. What are you talking about? All right, I guess we're gonna... I wanna do this, I wanna do this one. Cause this was my original plan. So what has happened in this journey is that we've been cornered, we've been cornered by all the clipboards. And um, we have a plunger device that we're gonna escape with our misshapen uh, not friend. And uh, earlier, the only option it gave me was to shoot the plunger at them. But I, I obviously wanted to plunger away from them and use it as a zip line. So I'm assuming that's what's gonna let me do now that I have a new word. Luca drew himself up and decided to take the only option they had left, flight. Yes, to get away. He squinted down the barrel of the mission control defense cannon, aiming it through an opening. In the Explaining this pages. game sounds ridiculous. Yep. He looked up the logical thing to have done the first time. Struck true. Struck true. Wow, I can't believe that worked. Hey, Mr. Kerr. We'd love to hear your thoughts, but I'm afraid we have places to be. Come on, Iggy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See you, jerks. Wow, that plunger really did strike true. Hmm, fine. We know where that leads them. This way, we'll take the tunnels. The what? The what? The tunnels, you say? I guess it's not just an underground base. I guess this man is Elon. The branches clawed at them, reluctant to give passage. After what felt like a marathon, Luca stopped in his tracks as they reached the clearing. That was all he was able to say before Iggy slammed into his back. The boys tumbled down a steep decline and crashed with a wheezing thud on a surface as hard as ice. In fact, it was ice. Well, I guess we're back to Frozen again. Chapter 5. Is this a good time for movie movie game? Whenever you want to, Signs. you feel free. They stood silently, catching their breath. The sky was like sapphire. With each breath, a plume of steam escaped from Luca's lungs. Let's keep moving. Luca pulled Iggy to his feet. Where as they are we? The snowy terrain. That plunger went so far. That was actually pretty cool. Oh, no, wait, what's his voice? That was Roller's voice. That was actually pretty cool. Uh-huh. I think we lost him. Movie, movie game, you got it. All right, Steven, here's your movie, movie game prompt for today. Folks, let, uh, let Steven answer first, of course. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, you should know. They're not be surprised I've been on fire movie movie game. Yep. Zando, don't answer for Steven, of course, even though you'll probably get it pretty quick. Uh, actually, looking at this one, I'm going to go ahead and guarantee you're going to get this one real quick. Maybe not, though. You've surprised me sometimes, Zando. Okay. Steven. Mm. A damned clairvoyant with terminal lung cancer attempts to save his soul by banishing demons back to hell alongside a high school basketball playing, back flipping, truck surfing lycanthrope. 
a damned clairvoyant with terminal lung cancer, attempts to save his soul by banishing demons back to hell alongside a high school basketball playing, backflipping, truck surfing, lycanthrope. Are we up in the mountains? I don't think so. Constantine Wolf! Constantine Wolf! Chats in the clap for Steven! Nailed it, dude. Very nice. That's a good one. I like that one a lot. Constantine Wolf is very funny. If anything, we went downhill. And then let's up with the wind to one lane. All I know is there's no going back the way we came. Let's see if we can get our bearings. Follow me. That is the grave, right? See, I thought that archway reminded me of my home. You've never seen Constantine or Teen Wolf? Now, Teen Wolf, I can understand, but Constantine is like a nerdy mile marker. Zando's just seen the movie covers for all of them at his, at his former workplace. Luca, Luca, are you there? Luca had almost forgotten the walkie-talkie he was carrying. Oh, it's Kerr. It said both's okay. I hope nothing bad has happened to you out in those woods. Luca looked at Iggy with hesitation. No need to be rude. With a resigned sigh, Luca responded. It seems like the only dangerous things in the woods is you. He speaks, the young man of the hour. Now, how in Tom Nation did you end up with one of our radios? Just lucky, I guess. Boy, how do you Van Horns are full of surprises, aren't you? You knew my parents? I never had the honor of meeting your father, but your mom sure was a handful. Luca winced, shoving the walkie-talkie back into his pocket. We gotta keep moving. See, I'm pretty sure this is my dad's grave. I'm like 99% certain that's my dad's grave. So this is going to take me back to town. Yep. What's the readout? Sitting just above 258 Kelvin. That's down a bit from last time. Should we report this to Mr. Kerr? Meh. Still within safe ranges. It may be spreading, but it's under control for now. Even a small nudge in the equilibrium could cause a cascade. Dude, relax. Just a few more sights to hit before we can punch out. Let's get this over with. What is happening? What is happening? Why is everything frozen? What's all this? Hard to say with all this snow. I think it's a town sign. I can almost make out letters under there. What town could this even be? There couldn't be another town this deep into Weepwood. I'm looking at evidence to the contrary. Let's figure out what we're dealing with here. Step one, snows, gotta go. Gotta lurk all good, Steven. Thanks for tuning in and lurking with us, my friend. Appreciate ya. I'll see what I can do. Is there something I can throw? Oh, yep, there was. Snowball. In situations such as these, I find it best to chuck stuff first and ask questions second. Cha! Cha! It is our town! What? The boys stared in disbelief at the sign that now clearly read, Welcome to Beacon Pines. That doesn't make any sense. We're in Beacon Pines? How's that possible? We ran away from town. How did we get back here? I guess we got turned around. Where did all this snow come from? Well, it's been colder than normal lately. That's a pretty big difference between sweater weather and this arctic hellscape. The puddle we fought uh, before, it was cold too. Maybe all of it leads to one source. You'll think it's related. What is going on? We're gonna get you some answers. Let's keep moving. Yep, that's town. Why is it bolted present. up? Each chain link encapsulated with a translucent layer of ice. Look like the stuff they put up. Looks like the stuff they put up around Weep Wood. The stuff he'll put up. I don't know. Toxic waste. Eh, yeah, stuff look familiar to you. It's like the barrel near the puddle. I uh, shove me into. Yeah. Oopsie, come on. It's all frozen. Looking down at the frozen stream, 
Luca could faintly see a school of minnows encased in the ice. Whatever happened here, it happened fast. The fish didn't even have time to run. Or, you know, swim run. The crunching of footsteps trailing Luca went hush. He looked back to see Iggy's face twisted. Everyone's gone. What? There's nothing here but more snow. There must be an explanation for all this. We have to keep looking. You can look all you want. I quit. I'm so confused. Believe me, Hunter Fam Mom. You're not alone. Iggy, we have to keep going. You don't get it. This isn't one of your pathetic Hank Atomic stories. We aren't gonna save the day. We aren't even gonna save ourselves. My face is mangled. The town is destroyed. And everyone we've ever known is gone. We don't know that. You can't just quit. Do whatever you want. I'm done. Iggy, it's gonna be okay. Luke appeared I just got back. Last thing I knew, sky. they were checking out Luca's house. Let me tell you, we've been some places. We've been a lot of places, really. And uh, we're back on the line where Iggy's face got messed up. And this is what we walked over into. Um, the last death we had was everything froze solid. Out of nowhere. He let out a long, foggy breath. Faintly, Iggy began to cry. Seeing Iggy in such a pathetic state gave Luca a sense of compassion and more than a little guilt. It is getting pretty late, I think. Probably not a great idea to stumble around in the dark anyway. Luca allowed himself to collapse next to Iggy. I'm gonna have to get this game. Yes, it's on Game Pass. So you can do the dollar for the first month or whatever and, and play it. Let's just rest for a bit. The boys huddled together for warmth and comfort. If not for exhaustion, their minds would be racing, trying to make sense of the events of the day. As it was, all they had energy for was to sit in silence, numb. We do post all of our VODs, and I fully plan on playing all of this game. At least to the first ending. I might play more endings on my own. But I don't think so. I think, it, I think it's just one game. I don't know if there's a completionist or not. The way the snow covered everything over. It's kind of calming. Yeah. I, I haven't had time to say it, but uh, thanks. Huh? For getting us away from those creeps. They sort of froze up back there. Iggy, I should be the one apologizing. This all happened because I lost my temper. Nah, that's blocky. First of all, you didn't know what that gunk would do. You didn't, right? Of course not. And second, stop with this baloney about losing your temper. But I did lose Iggy my temper. motioned sarcastically to his half-deformed face. Obviously. But that's exactly what you should have done. Huh? I was being a jerk. You were supposed to be a jerk in response. That's how it works. Iggy, I'm having a hard time following. You wanted me to fight you? Of course! Jeez, you goody-goody types take forever to understand the very basic point. Why would you go around saying cruel things trying to get into Iggy fights? Shrugged. It's something I do. You're a jerk because you're bored? Sometimes I just feel empty. You wouldn't understand. I love all these A24 moments we're getting today. Why are we getting so emotional? You and Rolo are always having a blast together. <laughs> laughing and calling that dinky little treehouse it mission control. Openly. Perfect little Luca Van Horn with his perfect little life. My life is not perfect. Everybody in town likes you. Not everybody. The new girl hasn't even unpacked yet. And even she likes you. You have Tish. He wiped his nose with a sleeve. I love Tish. Tish is great. But she ain't exactly the world's greatest conversationalist, you know? Luca gave a warm chuckle. I get that impression. He cleared his throat as he wiped his eyes. <laughs> it must be raining out here. Not the Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> Definitely. Iggy arched into a wide yawn. We should try to get some sleep. Yeah. Let's lay low for now. Tomorrow, we'll get to the bottom of all of this. Luca's eyelids began to slowly drift shut. Loka. Yeah? I always did want to see the inside of your dinky little treehouse. What do you think? Not bad. I'll give you the full tour when we get back. You know what? 
That's all Luca could whisper before succumbing to sleep. Iggy snuggled in some more. When it comes to worst days of my life, this one wasn't half bad. Cute. The house smelled of warm bread. Luca was playing with toy blocks on the living room rug. He looked up Another to dream with dad. on the couch. His mother held his father's head in her lap. She idly stroked his hair while humming a song. A voice behind Luca spoke. This is how you remember them, huh? Luca turned to see his own face. The doppelganger from his dreams, still clad in a yellow hazmat suit, still carrying a look of disdain behind empty eyes. Aww. Look at this perfectly cozy scene. You know it wasn't really like this. The figure picked up a toy block and inspected it. It's amazing the facades that one can build given the right materials. Not that I blame us. These are a child's memories, all warm and fuzzy. You don't remember, do you? Luca snatched the block from the figure's yellow gloved hand. Remember what? The doppelganger pointed to the couch. The last day we saw him alive. The day he chose to abandon us. Luca turned what? to look at his father, still no, he died. on the couch. No, he died. That's not true. He didn't abandon us. The doppelganger waved his hand dismissively. Everything is true here. It's just a matter of what we choose to see. Is Luca not a reliable narrator? Show you. The world flickered and pulsed. Luca was sitting next to his bed, listening to his heartbeat with one of his dad's stethoscopes. The doppelganger limped into the room. No, no, we both know that's not how this went. He grabbed Luca's hand and guided the stethoscope to the floor. Luca heard muffled shouting, brought close by the stethoscope. It was his parents, fighting. Do you remember what we did next? Luca gave a slow nod and crept down the hall to peek through the banister. He could see the outline of his mother at the bottom of the stairs. Damn it, Walt. We can't afford to get involved in this. She was scared. His father stepped forward. What am I supposed to do? Just watch? There's a sickness in this town, and we both know who's behind it. I swore an oath to help people. I won't turn my back on them. Luca's mother grabbed Walt. She was crying, pleading. I can't lose you. Walt calmly removed Eleanor's hand from his shoulder. What's right is right, and what's wrong is wrong. I could never live with myself if I let Sharper get away with this. Eleanor raised her voice. Spare me your bullshit platitudes. What about our son? Luca flinched, dropping the stethoscope down the stairs. Walt turned with a panicked smile. Luca? Is that you, buddy? With tears in his eyes, Luca descended the stairs. Mom? Dad? What's going on? Walt dropped to a knee to meet Luca eye to eye. Nothing, buckaroo. Your mom and I just got a little overexcited is all. Luca placed the stethoscope against his father's chest. His heart was racing. It sounded like you were going somewhere. Walt gently removed the device from Luca's ears. Listen to me, Luca. I have some business to take care of. I'll be back in time to tuck you in. Luca hugged his father tightly. Promise? Walt stood up and walked to the door. He glanced over his shoulder. I promise. With a wink and a grin, he put on his hat and strode out into the evening sun. What? A figure approached soundlessly what from the father's happening? Fall. Oh my goodness, I'm so confused. How can we be an hour and 45 minutes in and not have any answers, only more questions? <laughs> ah! And we're so close to the stream too. Children are not reliable narrators. I can speak from experience. We tend to turn lost parents into heroes. Wow. It stood above them, lingering in contemplation, slowly raising one hand above Iggy, it snapped out two brisk wraps on his head. From a deep slumber, Iggy sprang up defensively. Do I know who this is? 
Get your hands off me. Was the calming presence or the recognition that he was not in danger? Iggy felt his clenched fists lower. Just what do you think you're doing? Mika looked up, gradually remembered. The figure exhaled a cloud of warm vapor. You two certainly have caused a lot of a lot of commotion. What's that supposed to mean? Take it easy, Iggy. We were asleep, mind our own business. You're the one running and knocking on people's heads. I'm sorry if I hurt you, Iggy. It didn't hurt nobody. Anybody. Huh? Oh, I see. Hey, uh, you think you're better than me. You, uh... When it came to complete strangers, Iggy had trouble cobbling together an insult. You big-hatted. Scarfy necked fireball. Thanks for the follow. Find a stepbrother. What's up? Okay, let's lower the temperature a bit here. Interesting choice of words. I mean, let's all just calm down. Who are you? A friend. An observer. A hitchhiker of the infinite expanse of possibility. Great. Uh, how about a name? If you must call me something, you can call me Nat. How about you make like a gnat and buzz off? Very well. Nat began to turn away indifferently. Don't do that. Wait! Do you live here? You might say that. So you know where we are. You might also say that. Look, pal, we just want to find a safe way out of here. You're gonna help us or not? Before knowing how to leave, one must know where they are. All right, that does it. Look, I don't know about you, but I'm getting out of here, one way or Iggy another. turned sharply and began to stomp off. Hi, Iggy. Enough with the riddles. Iggy, wait up. Realizing he'd worn their patience then, Nat relented. Very well. I suppose this isn't the time for metaphors. I'll show you how to get back home. Luca and Iggy turned around with hope in their eyes. Come here. Nat took a deep breath in. Close your eyes. Nat exhaled slowly, then snapped his fingers. Okay, open them. For a brief moment, Luca and Iggy let themselves believe that some great magic was about to unfold, until they opened their eyes and found themselves in the exact same place, cold and disheartened. This is your home. This is Beacon Pines. Look, now we don't know how we got here. Maybe we stumbled through some time travel gate in Weepwood, or we teleported some alternate universe, or this is all some cruel experiment like her and his goons. But this is not our home. You're inching closer to the truth, and the reality is much less fanciful. Just give it to us straight! So be it. As I said, this is Beacon Pines. The original, true Beacon Pines. What do you mean? What do you mean, original true? What do you mean, original? You both grew up here. But the town you've called your home for the past several years? What are you talking about? <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? We've been living in a replica of Beacon Pines? <laughs> what? Oh my goodness. That's what we're going to call it. We're going to call it right there. What on earth is this game thinking? I am so confused, but I'm so here for it. We're definitely playing this next Thursday if we don't play it Tuesday because we got to finish this story. I got to know what's going on. Folks, we got to go find somebody to raid. Oh my goodness. What an exciting stream. That one was wild. Folks, thank you for those of you who hang, hung out with us this whole stream. Appreciate you. Appreciate you being here. We are Checkpoint Church, church for nerds, geeks, and gamers. Streaming Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and every other Friday. We will not be streaming tomorrow unless it's just a bonus stream, which honestly, it's been a pretty big week. I doubt it. But uh, we'll be back again next Monday with some more Poke Mondays. Uh, full schedule next week as far as I know it. Our nerdy sermon this Sunday is on Chainsaw Man. So spoiler alert. 
be after the fact, a little too late of a spoiler alert. Um, but we will be talking about Chainsaw Man, specifically episodes one and three. So that's all to really spoil. The rest of it you can continue to enjoy. And really it's just a moment from episode three. Um, but that should be fun. It should be a good time. And we're going to go uh, raid. Let's see. Who should we raid? Uh, we could raid Asia the girl. Yep, Asia's making food. Let's go. I'm hungry. I'm going to go get me some pizza. We're going to go raid Asia. Folks, we believe three things to be true. Every single one of you out there. Number one, that God loves you, like really, really loves you. Number two, we love you. We want community with you. That's what we're doing here on Twitch, Discord, and YouTube. Number three, believe that you, yes, you, no matter who you are or what you believe, whether you believe in God, don't believe in God, go to church, don't go to church, hate the church, none of those things change. These three things. God loves you. We love you. You matter. You are a person of sacred worth. The world is a better place. Why? Because you are in it. Folks, with that, until the next time that I see you, which will hopefully be right now over on the Discord, but it may not be until next Monday for some more Pokemon Days. I look forward to seeing you then. Until next time, bye-bye! <laughs>